are live. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hey. 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 Hello. Hello. Welcome back, everybody, to Chasing Tales. That's us. Hey, Tito. Oh, there's websites good. that I need open. Well, Meg's good and David's starting on the website. But aside well, from that... <laughs> do some D&D Beyond is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we need that. While we figure our stuff out, hey everyone, welcome back if you've been here before. If you have not, welcome for the first time. We are Chasing Tales. We are a TTRPG channel. We do multiple things, but this is our weekly D&D &D game. It is homebrew. It's 5e. It's my own home. And we are going to get into things quicker than usual, question mark. Um, so, to crack right on with things, number one, friends of the show, who just we wanted to just throw some support at, Cognitive Merchant. Do they serve a sale on their Etsy? Yes. They do? Go show them some love. They make wonderful handmade leather and vegan leather, TPRPG and love accessories, dice bags, dice cups, dice, dice trays, um, wizard hats, question mark. You should go find out. Go check out the Cognitive Merchant, uh, not UK. Do check out the rest of their links, socials, their Etsy is where they have a discount. So go show them some love. Number two, there is some general ambience and happening in the background, and that is courtesy of Sword Coast Soundscapes. They are a YouTube channel. He is a YouTube channel? I think it's just a guy. But I'm going to say they. They are a YouTube channel that make wonderful soundscapes and ambience uh, for your tabletop fantasy, or tabletop, not fantasy, just in general tabletop games. They also have a wonderful selection of playlists, specifically inspired by the various written adventures of D&D, including Tomb of Annihilation, uh, and others. So go check them out. They offer their stuff for use, and that's really nice of them. Um, anything else from you? I just, I, my hands are going nuts today. Um, anything from the rest of you guys before we get into where the wonderful soul guard are, and into picking up where we left off? We leveled up. You did. We did. Level oh, we did. Oh shit! Did I level myself? I did. You okay. Did, <laughs> yeah, you guys all did your health and stuff at the end of last time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Cool. All righty. Should we get into some what's going on? <laughs> yeah. We should. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. we do have a hydrate redeemed already by Tal. Thank okay. you. I'm very surprised. Hmm. Actually, we had two redeemed. Did I miss the first one? <sighs> Who was the other one by? You know the guess it. It's Tal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm also put a time limit on that, guys. Uh, oh, I was gonna, I was gonna do it anyway, but effect here. Alex, if you Alex, you're speaking but you're muted. I'm sorry. If I'm still alive to this day, it's because Tal has been giving me water. <laughs> you know, it's been it's been three five We're months only without him. I just been... because of Tal. We yes. owe them this our is like house plant. Tal is just here <laughs> to hide. Yeah, in that's many it. Ways. Exactly. Tal just gives. <laughs> we, we, we need a TV. It's just like a picture of Tal as a watering can, and that can be one of our emotes. <laughs> <laughs> We do. <laughs> can we can we make that the symbol for the hydrate uh, nip bit reward? Yes. All right, someone note that down, and we'll we'll, we'll think about that later on. For now, welcome to the Chasing Tales admin meeting that we have every Thursday at the beginning <laughs> of the stream. All right. We've said hello. We said who we are. We We've said uh, to go That's point right. out our friends and people who provide cool ambience and stuff. And so, to bring us back in to our game of Dungeons and Dragons. We follow the Soul Guard, currently chasing down the plots of the evil Lich Queen, Kaisa, who looks to resurrect an ancient, massive titan. She needs certain things for this ritual, however, one of them being the heart of a Zaratan, a mighty earth elemental. The Soul Guard have also recently lost a beloved friend and member, Maple, the roguish barbarian rogue. And the resurrection of such life comes at a cost but, and because this is fifty, it, that's diamonds. Um, because all spells require diamonds. But there is one place to find diamonds like nowhere else, and that is the elemental plane of Earth, the home of this Zaratan. And so the Soul Guard descend through the Underdark, past the the hometown of the wonderful Newt of Morio, and with the guidance of the various Durgar and Drow that are that family and friends of that home. The Soul Guard have found their way, jumping in the form of eagles through a floating void, a rift, into the elemental plane of Earth. And that is where we left off last time. As the five of you settle down to rest, getting a small uh, camp together, laying out your bedrolls, your tents. For the first time for almost all of you, 
in a different world. This is not the world that you call home. There is a direction that you can walk that will eventually find you home. But as you all sit down, take out your snacks, stuff your good berries, let's give anyone who is new to our wonderful little show a little description on who you are and what you look like. So, Alex, who are you? Who do you play? Who am I? Um, I am playing Ashura Takahashi, a uh, 10 level bard and no, an 11 level bard and <gasps> level paladin. Um, he is a drow, old, tons of scars, uh, sunglasses, long, uh, dark blue coat with golden lace and a, and a silver uh, a half plate underneath and some ogre, gauntlets of ogre powers and a, and a devil sword on his hip. Yeah. Everything. Uh, and yes. Rowan. Yeah. Hello, I'm Rowan. Uh, I'm playing Hemlock. She is a half orc, half elf, uh, a druid of the Circle of Spores. Uh, about six foot one, dark green skin, and brown eyes with long black hair in a braid. Uh, and she, big, big Coke bottle glasses, and a staff that she walks with to help her limp. Uh, a little, little piece of bracket fungus growing out of her right cheekbone and a little frog with a mushroom growing out of its back perched on her shoulder that is her familiar Lily, who's a little zombie frog that we all love. Zombie frog. Maggie. Me. Hello. Uh, hi, I am playing uh, Mara Gold. <laughs> she is a gnome druid uh, circle of the shepherd. Um, and she is three foot one, she's very small. Uh, and she has uh, white hair, which is constantly braided back in like intricate braids at the back of her head. Um, she has uh, like silvery druidic tattoos on her cheeks and on her forehead. Um, and she is almost constantly wearing pastels and floral prints um, and looking very cute and sweet. <laughs> uh, and she also travels with Willow, who is our little jackalope friend who we love. We are the Willow big, actually. squad. Baby. A medium yeah. size. He's, he's, he's man sized. He's not it's a little guy. He's the same size as me. <laughs> he's bigger than you. You're a bigger than you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Sure. Do. Big boy. He's like. Like the difference between Marigold and Willow is probably like the difference between a person and like a small pony. Yeah. Not like Shetland, pony, yeah. but like. Yeah. You know, full cool. on. Yeah, small horse. Jordan. Why, well, hello. I play the wonderful Hi. monk boy Newt, who is a way of the sun soul Durga, quite an old boy, uh, has some long white hair pulled back into a ponytail, a wiry beard with flecks of grass sewn in between, his body is covered in some elven tattoos that can go hot on command, and he just really likes punching things, <laughs> and it's the thing that he's by far best at. I've been watching My Hero Academia, and it occasionally interrupts the episodes for like a still image of like a person and like a little bio on them, like their name, blood type, hometown, skills, likes, and I'm just like reading down notes and it just says punching things at the end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> finally. But the no means leastly, David. Hello, uh, I'm David. I play Marcos Estreva. He's a human man, about 30. Um, tan skin, black hair, speaks with a bit of an accent, and he um, he is a, a ranger rogue, level 9 ranger, level 4 rogue. So, <gasps> I got an ASI at the level up, and yeah, he has yeah. now max dex. Yeah, boy. Dexy the boy. Dexy oh. boy that a boy that can be. Let's go. Alrighty. Bam. We love it. We love to Is see that? it. We love to see it. You all see Saw as this kind of grinding rift, just shifting rock that seems to just like bubble as if it were fluid and in a moment freeze solid that you entered through seemed to move on. It seemed to like rotate as a three object and grind through the wall of a cavern and vanish from sight, leaving you in this wide open, slightly windy, expansive cavern. You have found yourselves a little nook within this. You can see as the slightly glowing crystals throughout the space 
large stalagmites rising up from the ground in various minerals, some that seem to have a dark grey colour, some almost as transparent as glass, but that shift and move slightly, almost like hands of a clock that turn and twist. But the space near you is still for now. And as you begin to set up for a rest, is there anything you would like to do? Um, who's... Well... Are we, are we just doing stuff before we start taking watches then? Up to you. I think so, yeah. I if think so. If you want to do any, like, pre-bed yeah, stuff. Do we, do we maybe want to take a look at the pre scrolls together? <gasps> oh yes, we wanted to read the scrolls! Oh, that's right. Certainly <clears throat> can. There were tons of things we needed to go look at. Like, I mean, I mean, there was all the weapons and, and... Yeah, 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 that was... Yep, yeah, guys... yeah, we needed to look at the, the stories between the, the items. Yeah. The yeah. axe, the medal, mm. and the, um, well, not the medal, but like the medallion. And, 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 and the broken sword handle. Yeah. 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 Which one is yeah. your opening? So these items, so, storied items, which were valued by some person in this town of Mario before, you guys have traded for them, and you have each of these three items, which each have like a bit of, kind of twine tied up around each one, with like, almost like a, uh, a little scroll case attached to them. Which one do you think first? Do do the sword first? Oh. Is the kind of the smallest one, maybe? Do you want to do it by the size? Sword is we the could. most intriguing because it's broken. I mean, it's a it's a broken sword, right? Yeah, exactly. A, just just the you know, sword handle and has... like a bit of blade and it's broken <clears throat> off. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Do you know if had if he had any capabilities? Can he do anything? It, it didn't, can he kind it of cut, like, the scroll. The bit? It might be in the scroll. I don't, <clears throat> I didn't right. really check if there was magic on it at all. Um, okay. that seemed against so let's, the... Let's read the scroll. Yeah, I will, I will open up the scroll. Alrighty. I have a prop scroll. <laughs> this, um, this text of the history of this broken blade it describes <clears throat> a tale of how this belonged to a cultist of an evil demonic spirit. The cultist, following the orders and the tenets of this cult, slew their own family with the blade in its entirety. Uh. In this bloody midst, their heart faltered, and in a moment of regret, they slew themselves. Oh. Their own spirit, however, seems to become trapped within the blade. It fell into the hand of an adventurer as they picked it up on their travel, as it was thrown to one side and sold in a market. This adventurer heard the faint echoes of this spirit, both reek reeking of regret, but of also ambition, and it drove the adventurer mad. They eventually discovered the nature of the blade, becoming aware of their own slipping sanity, and they went on a quest. To destroy this blade and the spirit of regret and the evil within it, they bathed it in moonlight in the highest peak in the land and shattered the blade. They threw the hilt into a ravine, where eventually it was found by a small roving family of goblins, who traded it for... Um... <coughs> traded it for... Yeah, they traded it for a handful of hyena teeth. Nice. And it found it <laughs> trade. And that's fair. No, that's fair. Hmm. It now wow. lies inert. <clears throat> cool. Well, that was a surprisingly dark update. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Interesting thing to have, though. See, this is why I just don't use this. Yeah. I mean, not like I can exactly use why? this, so. Well, no one can use it when it's. I mean, I'm, you know, okay. we can make that. No. Not that we'd want to, by the I'm sounds sure. of it, mm. make it work again. Maybe but not. Yeah, that's the point, right? Like, we could maybe, I, you know, I could look at it and try to repair it, but should we? I mean, uh, I'm not sure, so right? keen on the not, idea of a not. possessed, regretful, uh, yeah. murderous suicide sword. You already exactly. have a sword from, exactly. from a devil. Like, I think you have enough. I'm not talking about bad swords. No, Don't I'm not talking about myself. I was, I was. It's a. It's yeah, a I mean, I mean, you know, if I exactly, <laughs> if I have to be careful, it's just all be. No, no. My point was, if Hemlock wanted the sword full, you know, I could look at it, but I don't think it's a good idea. No, I, I don't, um, I don't know how to use swords. It wouldn't, wouldn't be much use to me in that state. Honestly, they're overrated. 
Well, worst case... Yeah, worst case you can just hit people with a handle, I feel like, you know. Mm -hmm. Oop. A broken blade yeah. is still a sharp one. Oh. It is. How does the blade look, uh, Andrew? Uh, the blade itself quick, is, uh... is very humble, it's very simple. It has a wooden, oh, wow. like, actual handle, leather wrapping like, around it. That is even worse. Yeah. I can hear an echo of myself somewhere. Yeah, I can as well. It's through Alex. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, like, dark leather wrapping around the handle that is all worn and in places torn off. Uh, a very simple kind of darkened iron, like, handguard at the base. Simple kind of circular hilt. Blade comes up maybe two inches, broken off at an angle. Okay. Well, that's even more creepy. Um, should do you want me to at least check if it has nothing like magical or anything? Just, just to be sure, go for it. Why not? Okay. Um, and he's gonna take up his glasses, put them on, do, do a double tap like some AirPods, <laughs> and just cast identify on it. Your magical airpods. As you focus your yeah. magic through these glasses and cast identify across this blade, it seems to be inert. Cool. It's just a broken sword. Yeah. Okay. You have the yeah. battle axe and the medallion. Who do you want? Do you want to go, Marigold? I feel like this medallion looks pretty cool. Um, uh, I don't want to yeah. hear about yes. it. Yes. Uh, sure. Yeah, so I will open the scroll for the Icon of the Solar Father. All right. Ooh. The pendant of appointed sun, and it reads the symbol of Palor, a god of the sun from a far off realm. This hung around the neck of a noble swordsman that rallied with some strange friends after a calamitous attack devastated a city perched within a dormant volcano. An adventurer found the warrior delving with an ancient an adventure found the warrior delving within ancient temples and being scattered to the Shadowfell, where they witnessed the rise of an ancient evil entity named Raytheon. While much of the party fled to guide masses to safety from this calamity, the warrior remained to fight for his home and against an army wielded by this great evil. The warrior was slain in a mighty battle, and his holy symbol was handed down to his son. The sun rallied the resistance after years of strife finally destroyed the evil Raytheon. Later in life, the sun's husband grew ill, victim of a curse. After exhausting every other option, the sun eventually cured his husband's curse after trading the holy symbol with a night hag named Aletheria. <laughs> Alright, cool. So not, not Raytheon, only... Another bad... Not only did Anton die, Anton also had a gay son. Mm. <laughs> Which I love. Okay. Which I love. Like, wow. Which I fucking love. <laughs> Who then traded it to a hat? I mean... <laughs> yeah! What a king. Fucking hell. For those, for those of you watching king. the stream who don't know, um, this item belonged to Alex's old character called Anton. Mm. Um, so that's why we're so interested in the backstory because it's a little Easter egg from yeah. a previous campaign. <laughs> Raytheon. Yeah, we fucked yeah, up with Raytheon. Yeah, Raytheon yeah, we, was we did, fucking we terrifying, did, David. Can I just. Him. <laughs> Raytheon was As the story a said, giant black dragon. Like, he back. was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Cool. So, mm -mm. yeah, great. That's that's cool. Um, it's also a so. That might be. <laughs> I know David. Huh? I know the names I write. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's like <laughs> not intentional, but it is. It is. Um, but you have the <laughs> of the battle axe. Can you can you uh can you give me a quick uh, description of the uh, pendant? Yes, Just cause sure. I it's wasn't a... there. Okay. Is a, a radiant sun of curling gold with many, many pointed like curls of flame coming away from it, uh, in kind of bright, bright yellowish gold. In its center, there is a ruby set and kind of clutched within more kind of tongues of flame that curl inward. Um, and there's like celestial script of Pale or the Dawn Father is like written around it. Cool. <clears throat> All right, that sounds like a cool backstory too. Like just. Fighting like evil entity and shit. 
Mm. Better than the broken sword. No, I agree. Far less depressing. What about the the axe? <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, I mean, we can read it. Uh, it looks. You know, I was thinking about it. It's not really my aesthetic, but it does cool shit. But it's not really my aesthetic. I just hope. Yeah. I'll. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Okay. Let's read the thing. I'll just choose my my technology scroll an iPad um, nice. so I'm gonna read that <laughs> a humble battle axe worn and battered with a handle wrapped in leather cord with rose thorns that protrude along the grip a series of simple arcane runes along the blade of itself can ignite green flames when activated the blade itself was forged by a very simple blacksmith in a far far away realm and was given as a gift to a local boy the land was ruled by a cruel vampire lord, and the boy wielded his axe as he grew to a man, and he strived to free his people from this tyrant. With the help of his friends, the man wielded this axe when he defeated the lord of this valley, and life was allowed to heal. He bequeathed the axe to his daughter, who in time became a mighty adventurer herself, traveling to the astral sea to seek a mighty foe. Among the stars, she was unsuccessful. She was slain in the void of the Astral Sea, and the axe drifted through the winds until it found its way half lodged in stone somewhere in the Underdark. Oh cool. no! Just so you guys Where, know, I know you could alley? see me throughout that whole description, but I spent that whole time going, hee 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 hee. It just made me so excited. <laughs> Does it does it say where this valley was, or, or who this mysterious dark does it, lord? Does it perhaps is? give us a name? There, there, there are little scrolling signs no. in, in, I know uh, it is. in in Hakuri. You think Strad? Question mark. <laughs> That's a stupid name. Every every <laughs> every it's, it's dot just, of just... the eye. Every... So... every dot of the eye is just a tiny bat. It's another, <laughs> another explanation for those of you who aren't aware of this easter egg. Uh, this axe belonged to Andrew's character that he played in My Curse of Strahd campaign. Um, so it's another cute little, little, little easter egg that I love because I love Strahd so good. And, and also Dolor was like a really cool character. He was. He was badass. Indestructible. Was so cool. Completely overpowered. Yeah, but absolutely. also really cool. But that was my fault for letting Andrew make that character. <laughs> Towards the end, that didn't really come into play. No, no. like once you're fighting Strahd, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if you've got resistance to like non-magical because it's Strahd and he's got a scary sword. He's and a magic. wizard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a magic there. vampire wizard. <laughs> you're all sat on your bed rolls and rocks around um, a little camping space. Yeah. Alex. Yeah. Um. Marigold, did you um did you manage to know what your um if if your pendant was magical, or uh, I, I believe it is. Some, I uh, haven't identified it or anything. Attribute? Um, so feel free. <laughs> I think I think you That's guys right. might have done last time. <laughs> you boop it. It's Sunday and beyond. Um, it oh. is. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Marigold will be like, um, I think as a uh, I, I was going to say a man of God, but not that. Um. Uh, you know, a sort of holy warrior type, if you will, Ashura. Um, I think this would be more suited to you than me. Um, it is some sort of. Oh. Uh, I think it's uh, supposed to deal with undead or something like that. So. Oh, okay. Yes, I mean, it 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 is through since a bit I've been uh, dealing in more. I wouldn't say divine, it's exactly kind of not what it's kind of trying not to be. Um, but more, yeah, uh, spiritual. Um, do you, I mean, if if you give, this is pretty, a pretty great pendant. Do you want my, do you want the axe? Um, I, feel like I don't think I can you use, use that. that? <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, the worst part is you just, just hit people with the edge. That's, that's mostly it, you know? I, I, as in, I'm I'm three foot one. I don't think I can lift it. <laughs> right, right. Um, I mean, it's not that big. It's kind of like 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, but he, I'm also and, not and, as you know, strong as a lot of you. Yeah. So. Oh, I mean, if that's the case, you're always welcome to borrow the gloves. You know. I could, but I think mm. I have plenty mm. of things helping me along, and I have more than enough spells and things to keep me going. I don't necessarily that's need a true. enormous cursed axe for it as well. <laughs> We can, always, we can always keep Ma- it in, in the bag of in the bag of holding, if we. Mm. Yes, and then if one yeah, of us I'm, loses thinking... something, we can replace it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's 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 fair. I mean, I, I was thinking. I know, Marcos, you you deal more in into range stuff, um, but do you have any weapon for like melee combat? Well, I have my. Because that that could work well. I use my short right because literally. that that. I don't know if I. What is it? Like a one-handed axe or a two-handed axe? It's yeah, it's 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 kind of versatile. Uh, <laughs> Would it count as a martial right. weapon? Right. It's a martial weapon. It's a strength it is based a martial weapon. weapon. Yeah, I can use it, but, uh, but... I'm, I'm best with the weapons that require finesse rather than I, I know force. You know. As a reminder, sort of. Yeah. Down. No. No. I. I... Yeah, I was gonna say that's. I was gonna say. I think um, maybe a great part of it is when we get our friend. Maybe I mean a great part of it is you can. Yeah, I mean that's that's for sure. I mean I feel like this is an axe for Maple, but in the meantime, this is a great. It's a great weapon for someone like you who tries to uh, be unseen and stuff like that. You can literally go uh, into another dimension like very quickly and just kind of bend out uh, like next to an enemy and just. You know, as a reminder, you can just go to another dimension. Um, it you can use it to shed green light. It has an additional d6 fire damage. Um, it has yeah. three charges. You can spend the charges to either use the curse of binding, so you can within 30 feet force a creature to make a save or have zero movement till the end of your next turn, or you can use it to slice into the ethereal plane and you can be in the ethereal plane for like uh, to, like until the end of your next turn. Is that like the spell ethereal jaunt? Uh, no, it is uh, more like it is closer to the blood hunter ability ethereal step. Oh, okay. Um, and it's also cursed and gives you disadvantage on perception check. But you say the the axe has some effect that makes it harder to see things, right? <laughs> that is that is yeah, not also, that also, is not jam like, you know, with the Marcos style. Yeah, but but you can kind of <laughs> with the Marcos style. Okay, I feel like yeah. Look, I'm just you, the... you want it? I feel no, like we have an axe mm, now. Look, I've already dealt with one item that made it hard for me to see things. I would not want to do another. <laughs> no, it's just kind of... Also, um, yeah, Ashura, I feel like, okay. if we not... roll back the roll back the uh, story a little bit, when was the last time yeah. you saw me use a weapon? Never. I don't know. Maybe because yeah. you, you you don't know how to <laughs> use it. I can show weapon. you. Oh, I learned how. I just yeah yeah. Figured, I know his I don't want weapon. to rely on uh, weapons that can be taken or dropped or forgotten. Like, to, never gonna so forget these guns just... and you just starts flexing. Like, yeah, to, to, keep, to keep us moving. Right. And if anyone would like it, you can always put it in the bag of holding and deal with it later. I'll, I'll stick it in the bag. Yeah, yeah put it in the bag. It. Yeah, is it, it, in bag. it, like is it on do, D&D Beyond? It is. It is Hex Life's Bound Blade. Um, my blood hunting boy. Um, is there anything anyone would like to do as you guys settle down to rest? Um, do you want to, apart from maybe organizing some watches? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. Watches, conversations, um, things. Just... Yes. Thank you, guys. I made almost a whole page of notes on the stories of these items just because oh. I wanted to have it written down. <laughs> nice. They're I in got... note form, but like they're there, you know. I, I have three notes uh, Regret Sword, Halo Icon Anton Dead. <laughs> and um, and cursed axe, big whack teleport. <laughs> <laughs> big whack teleport. Wonderful, David. Big whack teleport. Give it. the dog a bone. <laughs> <laughs> no god. Big whack teleport. Feathers in your eyes. Alternatively, I'm pretty sure that phrase is somewhere in the fairly odd parents intro song. <laughs> um. But yeah, taking watches. Um, I guess. Yeah. yeah, who wants to take first watch? I'm I can. Take... Oh, I mean, we could go I mean, together. You want to do it? Do you want? Yeah. Why not? Not a bit of company. Me and Newt. Let's do it. Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah. So who's going next? 
Mm. Who are we waking up? Uh, I think me and Hemlock wanted to take a watch together. Yeah, we'll take we'll uh, take a watch together. Yeah. I think we both have dark one. vision That's as well, fair. so we I can do. do like the middle of the night. <laughs> Not that it's light down yeah, here I'll, anyway, I'll, 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 but I'll take the last four hours because if yeah, yeah, yeah. that works. I can. Sure. Elf. No. Yeah, it's fine. I'll be. I'll Elf be. You know, shit. I'll be meditating <sighs> for, for the first four. So. We could probably like overlap shifts no slightly, so you're not on your own for four hours. Yeah, that sounds so, good. That sounds like a good idea. Alrighty, then Marcos and Newt, go ahead and make a perception check for your All first few hours. Alrighty, that is a fourteen plus seven, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, that is an eight plus thirteen, so twenty-two. No, 22. twenty-one. 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 Tour 21. Um, I felt six higher than you. We still got the same. <laughs> <laughs> God damn expertise. You are almost lulled to sleep, the rest of you, by a very, like a strangely soothing, constant, very low vibration in the earth itself. The strange mutating, shifting, and grinding of rock never ceases. As the two of you sit up on watch, looking out into the cavern, it is dark. Aside from any light you provide and any dark vision you have, which only goes for a very, li very limited distance. You can just see kind of the edges of this vision, those stalactites that, those sort of mites that stand kind of up into the air, that were kind of shifting and turning, keep going throughout the night. And actually by the end of your watch are actually gone completely. They've rotated down and melded with the floor itself. And vanished. Aside from that, your few hours passes without, without incident. Like, there's one uh, <coughs> a small thing that you, mm -hmm. I want to do with you in the watch, which is um, just do a little do a little meditate in this new plane of existence, and really, really, you know, suck in that new key. Hell yeah! You you like <laughs> as you are not someone particularly attuned with necessarily the elements themselves. However, the key that flows Hey, he can you cast Druidcraft. <laughs> <laughs> However, the key that flows through you is not a distant cousin of that, that energy. And even as you are just sitting there watching, you can feel this place is thrumming with it. And it is everywhere. There's so much, the time there's so much key here. Go ahead. I feel like I could understand more languages now. Maybe all of them. <laughs> Marcos. Um, can I make like a survival check to try and determine what local flora and fauna um, are likely to be found? Go for it, make a survival just, check. Just, just sort of get a little bit of the lay of the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want some help? <laughs> sure. I think we'll go on a wander with you. So, do I get advantage if you're helping? Yeah, go for it. Sweet. One dice fell off. Um, <laughs> it's okay, that one's a natural one, so the 15 is what I'll go with. Um, 23. 23. Plus 8. You... Are taking a very uh, short kind of walk around um, the campsite area. Um, there's no middle ground with this music, it's either really loud or nothing. Um, <laughs> you... You don't really see any flora, aside from the occasional patch of moss. There really isn't any light here, and this particular patch at least doesn't seem to support much in the way of fungal growth. Um, as far as creatures go, you do spot, for the briefest moment, another one of those kind of ragged, almost bat-like creatures, far off, like, Further off among the kind of the rocks, out of sight, kind of flitting in and out, one of those methods, kind of, and move on. You also spot, you kind know, of drifting in and out of the glass of one of these stalagmites, like as it's drifting, it tw into, like, it's half of it's already in the ground, and you can f you can see the rock itself kind of moving and grinding as it descends in. A tiny, maybe a, a few inches tall creature roughly humanoid-ish in the way that it has four limbs and a small 
torso, have a slightly misshapen head and a couple like kind of divots in its head as if it had eyes. It's like darkish grey, parts of it are almost see through like the glass mm-hmm. of its in. As you see it kind of emerge from the rock itself of the stalagmite and it seems to watch you. And as you look towards it, it notices it and kind of pulls back and vanishes back inside the rock. Hmm. You're not sure what this creature is, um, but you get the impression that this place is home to creatures very, very suffused with the elemental magic and energy that flows through this place. So it's Most... not like a normal natural ecosystem at all. It's it's no. all very arcane it things seems live so. here. Yeah. I think I, I think Jordan might know what it is. You definitely doesn't. I think David knows what it is. Maybe. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for you guys? You're heading back and getting the next ones up. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, we'll head back. Had a nice little right. wander around. Yeah. As you guys get back, you kind of catch a very small glimpse of movement. Um, as like, you don't quite catch what, but it's something that would be the size of a small bat, kind of just above the air ahead. Too small to be one of those method things, but just a small flying creature kind of flits overhead. As you get back to your little camping area and rouse Marigold and Hemlock. Mm-hmm. Let's give him a little poke. <clears throat> little poke. Psst, Marigold, wake up. It's your turn. Okay. Here, I, I made a pot of tea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, good night. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's some moss over, like, just that way if you want to go check it out. Oh, <gasps> nice. <laughs> hey, there's and a little patch of moss over there. <laughs> I, I think we saw one or two of those, um, what did you call them? Method? Oh, the, the little sort of flying... Yeah, like leathery wing, not very nice yeah. things. Yes, yes. That's, that's, be careful. Keep an eye out. Oh, they're harmless. They're very easy to kill if we need to. <laughs> Good to know. Mm-hmm. Alright. Sit down with, with nice tea. Yeah. <laughs> Start the watch. Go ahead and give me perception check. Start the watch. Oh, yeah. Big money, no Cheers. whammies. Uh, 25. Five. Fifteen plus ten. Uh, twenty-four. Hey! <laughs> we see everything. We out here. Also, first, first roll on my new Marigold dice was a nat twenty. So. Nice. Oh yeah. Good vibes. For the first part, at least, of your watch, nothing particularly takes your attention. Um, you notice how those so much have disappeared from since you guys went to sleep, as pointed out by Newt and Marcos. But apart from that, it seems peaceful for now. Yeah, I would like to to chat with with Marigold while we're we're having our watch. It's kind of like sit down with the tea and go, um Um, Marigold, I've been meaning to um to ask you uh for a while now. Um so you've been a druid for a long time, haven't you? Uh yes. Quite quite a long time. I, I think remember. um I can't quite remember how many years exactly. Mm. Uh, at the moment. But... Yes. I, I remember you You said um, that you were, had another party before. Oh, um, yes. I, uh, it was, it was again, a long time ago. It was when I was doing my druid uh, sort of training. If you, I don't like to call it training because it wasn't really training. It was sort of mostly meditating. Mm. Um, but yes, um, I actually found them in the Feywild. Um, they were attempting to, uh, actually save my spirit guide, which had been captured by a hag. Um, yes, so, and I was with them for a while, uh, we did a lot of plane travelling and such, um, but I don't really talk about them much because it didn't necessarily end very well so oh, I'm, I'm sorry if i um, if i brought up 
bad memories. Oh, it's, it's okay. They're, they were... Uh, that's the problem, really, is I don't know if any of them are still alive or not. Oh. Um, but they, they were lovely people. <laughs> um, yes. Um, but that's that is that is the unfortunate thing is they could all be dead now. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I suppose that's sometimes how it goes. But if they were, I don't know, as competent as you seem to be, then I'm sure they're fine. I mean, I was much less competent at the time, <laughs> but uh, yes, I did. I travelled with them for quite a long time, actually. Um, it was just the four of us, uh, so they were a slightly smaller party than we are, mm. um, but they had quite some quite ferocious fighters. I was actually <laughs> the first healer they'd ever had. So oh, I, I don't know how they survived as long as they did before that, because <laughs> they all got very hurt a lot of the time. Oh, um, yes. But I don't know if they just started doing that because suddenly they had someone who could heal them. <laughs> uh. I've, I've, I wanted to ask you um, about, I suppose, about, you know, what you did becoming a druid. I know, I know it sounds strange because I'm also a druid, but I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know much about what I'm doing. Yes, or... I'm aware that your sort of uh, origins are a bit more of a mystery to you than yes. mine are to me. Um, it was odd because I didn't exactly choose to be a druid, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I was sort of learning a very minor healing and medicine at the time. Um, and then I was sort of found or called upon, I suppose, um, by a fey spirit. Um, and they so they led me through the woods and it wasn't like when we came here i didn't step through a portal or anything the uh, the woods just kind of m merged and was suddenly the feywild i don't oh. know how that works <laughs> um but i suppose that is how the feywild is sometimes it's not always obvious mm. um it's just kind of if you wander in the woods long enough you end up there uh which is kind of what happened um but yes and then i i got there and the spirits kind of taught me about how to connect with the weave uh, and I met a lot of various fey creatures they're all very odd looking <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean not in a bad way uh, unless you go to the um, the sort of bad part of the fey world it's not all fairies and sparkles uh but um yes and i just kind of meditated and looked at a lot of new plants and eventually kind of tried out some stuff and it just sort of happened i wish i knew more sort of i don't know uh academia on the subject but it was just <laughs> It, again, it, it's not dissimilar to your experience in that I had someone who guided me there, but I didn't exactly learn anything of my own volition or yes. because I was particularly studying something. I, uh, it's just sort of, you know, I see. it's like you say, you can connect with the weave if you garden. Yeah, really. I, but... I don't know. Maybe maybe that was how I don't I don't think I had a guide. As as much as 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 you did, um, just sort of happened when I was a kid, and one day I couldn't do it, and the next day I could do it, and then um, I remember I don't know if I remember or if I feel like I think I remember, um, but when we when we last went down into the Gordark, when when there was all the the mushrooms that we found there, there was this woman that. I could see but nobody else could and she took control of my mind it was a, a whole thing and oh. th and that night it was like I had a I'd, I'd remembered something that I'd forgotten of being back home uh, in in Levasuda and she was there in my childhood bedroom 
but I don't know whether that was a memory that I'd forgotten or just something she made me think was a memory. Yes, I, I see what you mean. Um, was she similar to the sort of mushroom people we saw before? Kind of, but less mushroom and more person. It was like she 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 was a, a woman. I could see she was a woman, but she had instead of hair, she had mushrooms and she had clothes made of mycelia and she she spoke to me like she called me um uh, i don't think i've ever really said this she called me her young queen oh yes well that's um, nice I'd, i it, can't see that being a bad thing it didn't she, she, she mm. said it in a way that didn't feel nice Oh, um, well, in retrospect, not, in retrospect, because, you know, she told me that I, I should go with her and I wanted to go with her and I I hurt Marcos trying to go with her and uh, it was, mm. yeah, not not anywhere near as nice as the, the, the ones we met up, back up there, but... That's interesting. It and seems then, similar in a way that uh, if she is kind of the you know, hidden guide that you haven't encountered until now. Mm. Uh, it appears that, for, at least for you and I, druid powers have become a thing that we didn't necessarily choose to have, but that no. was kind of thrust upon us. <laughs> yes, I suppose. Um, I remember, I mean, I hope it's not the case, um, I brought it up with with Lady Cathel and Zari, you know, the dragon, because I thought maybe she's she's old, maybe she'll she'll know yes. this woman seemed ancient, and she mentioned looking into fungal demonology. Oh, and, and I, I, a I, demon? I, maybe I don't know. It's I haven't hmm. looked into it because I thought maybe if I didn't look into it, then it wouldn't matter. But it's not really left my my, my brain, so. Yes, that might mm. be worth looking into. And that's, you know, that's not to say that... I was going to say it's not to say that all demons are bad, but I've not encountered a friendly demon. I, I don't know that much that about demons. Of. That much about demons, apart from what what we've learnt on this journey. So... Um, yes. Well, uh, yes, it might be worth looking into. I don't know mm. that there'll be much information on that in Adagan, because mm. of, you know, the whole not being super in on the magic thing, but they might have something in the uh, the Arcanum. Maybe. Uh, although that's more about arcane magic. Um, I don't know. Maybe we could do some some meditation at some point and Maybe. I can try and... We can connect with the weave and try and find some information. Some oh. Self-reflection is always a nice way to recall things you might oh. have forgotten or that would be nice. dig out things you don't necessarily want to face. I don't think um, I've ever properly managed to meditate before. I tried to do it with Newt, but I kept my my, my brain just kept wandering. As yes. you say that, um, oh. Oh. both of you notice on a on a rock, maybe maybe thirty feet away, just within the limits of your dark vision, um, you see just like a, a small like a flit of movement. Um, and similar to the description given by Newton Marcos, a small, like something the size of a small bird, which like ruffles its wings. And it's like maybe three inches tall. And it. away. Oh. Hmm. I don't know that I've seen one of those before. It was in the darkness and kind of near the end of your. Range yeah. of sight. It was more like the the size and motion, as to what it was necessarily. It's a little hard to see. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it might be worth doing at some point, and you yes. can always help. Mhm. Mm Just need to find somewhere where I'm a bit more relaxed. I kept getting distracted. I think we were in the garden, and I kept hearing birds, and I wanted to look at the birds. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Well, thank thank you. I really I appreciate it. It's it's nice. I've never really um met another you know another druid, really. So, thank well, you. Uh, I'm glad we have met. And um, yes, I know druids aren't necessarily 
uh, popular, I, I want to say. Mm. I don't think that's the correct word, but... Um, you didn't get many of them on Levasuda, or if they did, they didn't stay long. I mean, Levasuda is, I seem to recall, the kind of place that people tend to move around a lot anyway. Yes, people uh, people didn't tend to stay for there very being long. pirates and such. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I wasn't exactly um, beloved there, but that's a different story, so... Ah, uh, yes. I mean, there were some people when I came back to the tribe who were concerned because I had gone away, hmm. uh, disappeared into the woods for about a hundred years. Oh. Uh, and then just came back a lot more powerful than I was when I left. Um, so understandably, some people were concerned about where I'd been and how I'd gained said power, but they got over it eventually when they realised I could heal pretty much any ailment or injury they tended to get, which happened a lot when you have a lot <laughs> of hunters. So does, does tend to make you pretty useful. Absolutely. And there's not a whole lot of... like You know, there are a few clerics, but they're not... Um, they don't have the same, you know, rigorous, proficient training that cleric clerics of the city and large temples do. Mm. Um, so they have a, li- a little bit of healing, but not enough to go around. Really, it takes them a while to get around everyone. Yes. Well, I'm I'm glad to have met you and to be able to say this thing with someone who, you know, I I I love the others. I do, but there's. I feel like sometimes they don't quite understand but you do and I really appreciate that <sighs> right well we should probably wake up Ashura or yes. is it is it waking if he's just uh, meditating I don't ra- know. rousing I, I don't I, know yeah. I, my father used to do it it's, I should know more about it my father did, did it all the time I should know more like poke him <laughs> hello <laughs> wave a hand in front of his face I'm sure like is, is Naruto Uber shit meditation. right now. <laughs> <laughs> like he's doing like a Naruto like. You're muted boy. You're muted boy. You're muted also, boy. as a heads up, we've got a hydrate and a posture check from Tal. Oh, oh thank shit. you. Oh, and good. Good. I'm checking. I like. I, I like. I like the idea that he gets. He go, he goes to meditate, like to trance, but like in a very cool position, like like this. And like after ten minutes, he just goes. <laughs> he's up. like he's like Doctor Strange. <laughs> he's like ah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but at the beginning, and then the, by by the end of it, he's just like, ah. <laughs> I, I'll go. Uh, yeah. chins. I'm gonna go up to Ashura and I'm gonna blow in yeah. his ear. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, Ashura, no, not Ashura. now. <laughs> ah, this is horrible. Why? Why are you doing this? The best, it's the best way to I wake someone up. Good. It's the best way you are, my friend. It's the best you. way to wake someone up. Because if you're good aligned, <laughs> I am. I am good aligned. I'm I, chaotic, good aligned. I am good aligned. I'm chaotic yeah. good aligned. <laughs> I'm, I'm very some, hygienic. It's okay. it's look. If I if you I've noticed. I know people that sometimes if you poke them, they'll have a knife and they stab you with it. It's the best way to do it from a distance. That's true. That's true. Yeah. 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 Just throw like. Throw a people at me. Throw a, a people? <laughs> people? Sorry. <laughs> people. I said it. I'm good. People. I'm good. I found a way to say it. I am good. Uh, An inside joke, guys. Um, look, um, there are some weird little flying things. Uh, but apart from that, okay. it seems all fine. Like, Nothing like, aggressive. Uh, Again, a little bit. Well, Again. if. Oh my god, why? Um, if, um, oh yeah, it's far away. Well, I mean, if, uh, if there's nothing, if there's something bad, I'll just wake you up. I'm sure there won't be anything. It's, it's, I hope nothing is coming. Anyway, alright. Um, well, good to sleep. I'll just, uh, start, uh, looking around then. Alrighty. Go ahead and give me a perception pick for your part of the wall. I can. It's wow. It's an eight plus. Oh fuck! Twelve, twenty. 
It's eight plus twelve. Okay. Damn. Yep. As you take yep, your yep, seat yep, yep. Uh, and begin to look out across the cavern, your familiarity with such large, dark spaces grants you a good view of a lot of this section of the cavern. It descends into a rising tunnel uh, further off and down to one direction, but as far as this area goes, it remains pretty quiet throughout. Occasionally, you hear another slightly louder rumble, and kind of dust and rubble kind of falls from further away, um, but nothing get nothing gets too emo- too close. Uh, to the camp. You occasionally do see what you've been warned about, the occasional small elemental creature kind of crawling among the rocks, then almost diving into the rock as if it were water. You also see another kind of flitting, like one, two, three, of these kind of small, small, like, like hedgerow bird like sized creatures kind of flitting in the darkness, kind of like one perch on like a new, like, like stalagmite is, like, kind of turning and grinding out of the rock out of one of the walls. You can, like, perch on it. You can, like, <laughs> like, the faint of like, tweeting. Fair enough. They seem to be birds. And then they vanish away down the tunnel. Oh, okay. Birds here? No. Weird. But aside oh. from that, the rest of you um, is relatively peaceful. Can I, can I, um, take, um, my sword and kind of, like, lay it out on my, on my lap, um, while I'm on the watch, um, and while I'm looking at those birds thinking, what the fuck? (laughs) Um, Gisela, you, you here? Always. Voice kind of rings out in your mind from the red blade. God, that must be a, a pain to be a sword. Um, so we, we, yeah, no, we've we've met. Um, you know, the, you, you remember the devils we've met, right? Like the the guy that was kind of like uh, you you knew him. I Jolang, yeah, ish. We're yeah. friends. I knew of him. <laughs> right. Um. You know. He, he, like I kind of guessed. I think uh, if I remember correctly, you you told me about this, but you you are you're imprisoned by by your brethren in this sword. Is that right? This is a punishment. Yeah, I'm stuck here talking to you. What? I didn't understand. Sorry, Andrew. Can this you this is a punishment. I'm stuck here talking to you. Yeah. Ah, yeah, and I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck with with you too. Um, but that's kind of what I'm trying to get to. Um, Kithana, we're stuck with each other. Um, and it seems the people I hate, I mean the the things I hate, um, also don't like you very much. Um, so you know, like like. What did you do to to get in the sword anyway? Make a persuasion check. Let's go! It's a plus 13! Come on, bad boy. Come on, bad boy. That's a 12 for 13, 25. Ayy. <laughs> Telepathically, from the soul trapped within the steel blade, its size, um. I was given a The blade task. kind of vibrates like... I was given a task and I failed. A large ah, group of yeah. forces under my command were destroyed. My punishment for that was to not be allowed to wield others and so I were, was to be wielded. And so I was shoved in my own sword. Fair enough. Okay. Your boss is someone that has a very weird saint, a saint sense of irony. That is, I mean, it's kind of funny, but also weird. Um. Right. Do you, do you, you know, um. Do you have uh, a negative feeling about about your people, about them putting you into a sword? 
No. My failure was true, and so will my atonement be. And so when the time is right, I shall stand on my own two feet again. It's a harsh sentence, but it's one that Fair I enough. have made my peace with. Not many other choices. Can respect that. I was thinking, um, as you were saying, we stuck with each other, and um, we 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 are heading in a direction that uh, you and I kind of have goals in common. Um, we're going against demons, um, against Lich Queen uh, Kesa, um, and. And I was thinking maybe for the first time we should we should kind of play play it as a team, like at least you know try to help each other. Hmm. Know that I don't do things by half. And she says that you <laughs> you feel a jolt of momentum, as if you've been shoved backwards. As you fall back, you. Stagger backwards as your foot plants behind you. And you look up. You see um, a, a red and orange sky. Black clouds with red lightning tearing from them across a desolate plain. Mountains rise in the far distance. Okay. A river of dark black liquid flows down the hill that you stand on. As you kind of look up and around you standing before you is a dreadfully beautiful figure black steel armor curled with hooks and points a crackling lightning coated blue whip coiled at the hip on one on one side and on the other a very familiar red steel blade looking down at you from about 10 11 foot of height with a black steel helm and a pair of glowing yellow eyes within. She reaches out a gaunted hand towards you. We both have our failures to rise from. Put yeah, we our sword in the burning angel's hand and we can do this together. One quick point. It's really funny, it's actually your sword, so it's kind of like, even more irony. Um, okay, yeah, I'll just the take it. The first time um, you see the physicality of like an actual eye roll and sigh of this Eren, yes, as she... <laughs> Do you take the hand? Yeah. I... I hope this will... will make a good team. A smile and widens. Kind of bites you, see, you see beneath the helm a smile crack open and sharp pearly teeth are bared as she grips your arm and shakes it once. You see immediately kind of there is no pain, but you see a coil of flames in kind of links of chain go around your arm. You don't feel the impact or heat, but there's just like a light pressure around your arm and it flows all over you. She releases with a grin. And as you kind of blink, there's another jolt of force and you find yourself once more seated in front of your camp. The red steel blade across your lap. The crystalline guard where that yellowish eye rests it is burning yellow. As you glance down at your own hands, you see kind of traced around the hand that you shook with hers. Very, very faint, almost imperceptible links of chain. Almost like a very fine tattoo across the skin. Like dark grey on slightly lighter grey. Wrapping around the hand. Got high the brain, the blade, by the way. Ah, okay. The blade itself seems to be going because I am thirsty right now. <laughs> thirsty bitches in here. The blade itself seems to be vibrating. 
and you can feel through your kind of arcane connection to the blade itself. She has shaken your hand now. And Blood Opal is now in its exalted form. Oh, Awaiting form. Oh shit! Oh, shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Oh, boy. oh my god! Right. <laughs> boy! Uh. Oh. Well, goddamn. And you right, girl. have made a deal with the devil. The way everyone else that whole time was yeah. like, no, Ashura, don't do it. And I'm sat here like, yes. Me and Me and Meg have just been in the yeah. chat, like going, giant woman, big titty demon mummy, step on me. Ah! <laughs> Eren is a dissociation. They're the hottest demons. They're really Make hot. You- uh, Ma- yes. <laughs> Megan literally said, "Oh, it's so bad! It's so bad that uh, <laughs> that Ashra is gay." And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, Alex, <laughs> bye." But that's fine. Can um, Alex, he's he's Alex everything. Was, Andrew was describing her, and I was like, "Oh, Ashra is gay, though." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, with your info, Ashra, one blood opal awakened is on being beyond. Um, for general. Yeah. Do you want to keep it a secret, or do you want, or, or are you happy to say? Who? The, the like, w- would, would you like me to say what it does, or would you like to keep that a secret? Oh, um, you, c- you can say it. I feel like it's cool. It's yeah. fine. You can say it. It is now upgraded to a plus two longsword. The fire damage has gone up from D6 to a D8. And once per sunset, when you hit a creature with the sword, you can make it a critical hit. Oh shit! Fuck, that's oh, good. No. It is good. It is a good <laughs> Ariel. I like posture. I like the uh, idea oh, that it resets oh, at sunset instead of sunrise because it's like yeah. evil weapon, good weapon. <laughs> <laughs> God, imagine that combined with like the potion of max damage that Hope gave me. Like, that's a, that's a spell um, thing. Yeah. That's, oh, is yeah. that just a spell thing? Okay. It's a spell yeah. thing. Oh, Does, do, do smites? Do smites? Smites are spells, right? Yes. You you do smites, smite. smites count as part of your weapon attack. If you were casting a smite. Yeah. If you crit when you, you hit with a weapon and then you choose to smite, like Divine you Smite, all smite of that damage. damage gets doubled as well. Yep. And his psychic blades. Every single time. Add psychic blades. Yeah, because Divine Smite. This is. Divine Smite. We're not not even like. We're we're not even like an hour into this game. Remember remember when that. Vibrating. Yeah. Remember when last level I said I I, I reached my max build? This is it, guys. (laughs) This is it. (laughs) I can go around and strip on people and do 250 damage and be like, boop, you're dead. No. We'll see. Uh, All right. Um, I'll just take another hour and uh, keep the blade on my lap and try to um, uh, get um, linked with the medallion. All right. You are tuned to the icon of the Stolar Father. Tune. Yeah. I love this. You fucking... You Paylor would deal, not approve. You make a deal with the devil and awaken a vestige of Zariel and then attune to an icon of Paylor in the same mm-hmm. evening. Chaotic bitch. I love. I mean, if this right now, right now, sure. <laughs> yeah. If this is not a sure, he has three pendants. He has two pendants of soul bearing in his thing. Zariel and Taylor are like, you know what? Demons though, fuck them. Fist bump. Like, yeah, Ashura yeah. is just sort of it's like, true. he's not a paladin to any god or devil oh, he or is demon. A to he's a paladin of getting shit done. So he's like, yeah, magic power, magic power. I'll take it. I'm sorry, but you can't. You cannot yeah, essentially it's, it's call Ashura a, pal- a paladin of productivity. That guy is too fucking careful. Ashura, Ashura is a paladin of sitting on the fence and whacking people from both sides of it. <laughs> <laughs> those of you that those of you that have seen uh, what is it? One seven two masters. Um, oh, t- uh, yes, yeah, the two like yeah, one se- one yeah. seven two masters, one man yeah. two governors, the play, yeah, like that but with yeah. gods um, <laughs> and they're not in love oh Any god you're Maybe more like a paladin of by any today. means necessary <laughs> <laughs> your rest comes to an end you are all 
granted your long rest and your level up. You all come to, you gather your pieces of camp. The blade itself, Ashura, as you kind of, more time passes, it seems to grow a little bit longer and kind of jutting back along the blade, you can almost see like sharp, like jagged, like, like regular like barbs along the blade have kind of grown out of the steel. Um, just making it a little, okay. a little it looks a little bit meaner. Um, and it's hot. Like even if it hangs on your hip, like, you can feel the heat radiating. Yeah. From. Um, Fair enough. You also okay. Have, you look. Who did? Um, <laughs> uh, so Mar- everyone but Marigold notices that Ashura's sword is a bit bigger. Everyone apart from Marigold also notices. Uh, Hemlock looks like she's wearing a hat. Like a like a small brimmed hat that looks to have like almost the cap of a mushroom a small veil of my like, <laughs> like descending from it the bracket fungus on the cheek has grown out by maybe an inch and the kind of glowing blue light it descends both from this bracket and this cap growing mm. up top of the head so oh, as she stands as she, the mushroom. as she stands she her, her face is bathed in the, uh, the softest blue light <laughs> From hanging like my ceiling around it, she seems to like must stumble as she gets up. Um, so cute. You, you still have your braid of hair kind of descending down your back. Um, is um <laughs> is the uh, li- Lithia's circlet still there? Um, you can you you can kind of feel it. Yeah. Um, how you're gonna get it off? You're not quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um. Um. N- nice hat. I don't. I don't think this is a hat. Uh, um, can you feel I, this? I'm, <laughs> can I? Can I feel it if he taps it? You can. You not only feel when he taps it, you feel it a few moments before. Oh my god! As long as he begins moving towards you, the spores that hang around you seem to be alive. And as he moves cool. through the air itself, you can feel. His hand coming closer to you. Uh, oh. Okay. Mm. Right. It's almost overwhelming in that moment of like, oh shit, I'm completely aware of everything around me. Yeah. Well, you look towards Marcos and someone else kind of like moves to one side and you know exactly what has happened. Oh my mm. god. Um. Okay. This is weird. Um. Hmm. Do quickly pats his head. You are lacking any kind of fungus hat. Huh. It's not contagious. Um, yeah. I think <laughs> at this point, um, because I think this is going to be funny, uh, Newt would hear in his head. Mm-hmm. What do you? Oh, well, I'm glad it's not contagious. And Hemlock's mouth doesn't move. You see Newt very, like, just, just sort of looks around, like, but, hey, did you? Is there someone else here? Someone? What do you mean? I, Are you... I could have sworn that I just heard something. What, heard what? Well, something told me that it's not contagious. Well, that's a uh, relief. Um, and then kind of looking at you and just think in like in your head can you hear me right now no mouth movement yes i'm gonna look over to ashura in your head can you hear me right now that's you yeah. what did you did you just become really good at like ventriloquism like no what is, what um, <laughs> i think i think you can hear my thoughts Maybe. Ah, I don't. That's, that's I don't want to hear your thought. I feel like sometimes I, I you don't... just think about like hard brains. I mean, I sometimes think so... about that. I think. Hold on. And I'm gonna try and yeah. hear their thoughts. Can I try? Like, I'm gonna take, like turn to one and just like say something to me, but in here. Do any of you try? Okay, understand? you have a mushroom cap on your hand. By my, I did it through my thoughts. 
when you seem to respond directly to when Hemlock speaks to you through this tele- telepathy, Hemlock, you can hear okay. um, oh. in, re- in response. Essentially, the way it works is you can speak to them. Mm-hmm. If you speak to them, they can respond. Okay. Oh, cool. So you, you can establish a connection that you can sever at any time, but they can respond if you if you speak. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you becoming a mushroom, Hemlock? Maybe. You couldn't see what was his. The... <laughs> Do you remember the the blue mushroom guy that like helped yes. us in the tunnel when you all fell unconscious? Even though it was him who made you unconscious, he could do the same thing. Yeah, it's true. Are you turning into one of them? Is that, that how they spread? Maybe it's a mushroom demon thing. Maybe demon. Uh, nothing. Yes. Nothing. It's a very very normal thing. Nothing. Um. Demon, demon thing. Um. Why? Why would it be a mushroom demon thing? It wouldn't Ergo. be a mushroom. It wouldn't be a mushroom demon. It's fine. Demon. Well, I don't think those those okay. mushroom people were demons. They seemed pretty nice, if a little cautious. Um, That's true. That's true. Well, I mean, pretty nice. We don't know. They felt like just mushroom people. I don't. I don't know if I trust them. You know, feels like it depends. They let us pass. So, okay. Yeah, true. I don't quite know what what this is, but if it seems it doesn't I don't I don't feel like I'm lost it. I don't feel like I'm hurting. I feel a bit shaky. Hmm. A bit okay. I mean it's potentially taken a lot out of you growing a mushroom out of your head during the night. Yes. <laughs> Wait, yeah, Marigold, Marigold, yeah. Marigold, you're on, you're on with Hemlock. Uh, yeah, that, that was not there while we were talking. That's a fast growing mushroom. Oh, um, like four hours. That is very fast. That's okay, fast. okay. Well, if if <clears throat> it happens again, we'll keep keep an eye out for it. And if it happens to anyone else, then we'll figure out. What that means? What if it doesn't oh, stop? Actually, if, if, and you just turn it into sorry, a giant mushroom? I have a. I have a quick. Um, I can. I have a quick OOC question for Andrew. Hello. Okay. The aesthetic changes that we had while we were in the Underdark are they mm-hmm. still there? Newt's oh. eyes are green. Um. Uh, Asura still has those blue, patches of right? pale. Um, Asura still has those patches of uh, pale. Yeah. Um, Willow, Willow has a racing stripe. <laughs> Willow has a racing stripe. Um, Hemlock was a kind of like the the starting of the glowing. Um, yeah. And it's brighter right. now. It's like she has like a, a soft blue night light. Here. So cute. <laughs> That's gonna make stealth hard though. <laughs> it's very very dim. Like unless it's absolute blackness and something has keen eyes, it probably won't massively impede. Hmm, okay. The fact that Hemlock's a clumsy piece of shit probably will, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's alright, that's what we got Pass Without Trace for. Yeah, Pass Without Trace. Excuse Pass Without me. Trace cancels out glowing mushrooms. Everyone mm-hmm. knows this. They teach it in, like, yeah. day one range. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll kind of, like, get back up, but um, I'm still kind of weird, like, weirdly looking at people when they're moving around me before they do it kind of things. Yeah. Um, Hemlock, come here a second. Um, 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 yes. I just want to try something on you. Uh, okay. Just to check. Do you... I feel like this is a fair question, but just because you have some time, you want some things sometimes that I don't know if you want. So do you want to me to remove the mushroom cap? I don't know. Maybe it could okay. make it a little less conspicuous. The mycelia is nice, and like, I'm kind of can... running through like the hanging no, bits. Not. It is a lovely yeah. look. Because I can, I can try to either remove a disease if this is a disease, or maybe uh, remove like a, a possession or or whatever this is trying to do on you. Um, uh, I can try to remove the effect. We could see. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what what this is. I don't feel. Okay. Like, I'm being possessed. Bad. You don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. I feel uh, a bit, and um, I'll kind of like 
you see, as Hemlock's kind of standing up, she's definitely a bit more shaky on her feet than she used to be. Um, mm. But uh, looks okay, kind of um... almost a little bit thinner than before. Uh, but apart from that, I, I, I feel fine. As a perception 20, Andrew, I feel like uh, we see that. Yeah, she yeah. is. She is like, vis- like visibly, it is not difficult to see as she stands and like r- r- rests on her staff. She is leaning on it more than she was before. And not and like, but not there's like her her you... leg seems more painful because like her arms are just a little bit more frail. Um, you, it seems that right. you seem a little weak. I don't doubt growing a giant mushroom out of your head has taken a lot yeah. out of you. Should we get some breakfast? Yes, yes, that would be nice. Thank I feel you. like that's a good point. Hemlock, you get um, extra this morning. Yeah, and thank then... you. Alrighty, you guys prepare some food, share some good brews, perhaps. Um, you gather the rest of your camp. Is there anything you'd like to do before? Any what would you guys like to do? Um, um, um I'd yeah. like, yep, to ask Marigold about elementals and. Little oh, spirits and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Marigold. So, yes. you seem to know a lot about planar things. Um, right? Not all planes in particular, but I think elemental specifically because I can summon them. So, I know okay. a little bit. Do you know of any <laughs> elementals or things that we might find? in a plane of earth that looked like it was small bipedal was it the little like... flying thing no it didn't have wings oh. it looked like it looked like a little man but like a doll like didn't really yeah. have eyes oh. it was like little dips is that no, the one that just kind of disappeared into the rock yeah it was hiding in a oh. rock inside the um... rock like like it just walked through I don't know. Let me see if I can make some sort of check. Go ahead and make an archive check for me. Um, (laughs) For Marigold. Yeah. This cock. Uncock that shit. This dice tray sometimes is unhelpful. (laughs) (laughs) But it feels great. It does. Uh, Arcana. That's going to be a... 16. 16? Um... I might know You're not... Bit. You're not entirely certain by this description. Um... Hmm. Your knowledge of elementals comes more through trial and error and drawing on the elemental energy through the weave. It doesn't give you an, encyclop- an encyclopedic knowledge of different categories of them. Nah. And while you're sure there are plenty of small, minor elementals that inhabit the plane, the nature of the one of Marcus's description doesn't really well. Can I also use that check to see if I know anything about the flying thing that I saw? Um, can make a nature check for me. Nature? Okay. Ooh. This one's way better. I have plus seven to this one. Oh, uh, that's gonna be a 16 again. <laughs> 16? Um... Yeah, it was dark oh. and it moved quickly, but it looked like a bird. Yeah, like a like a like a bird bird, maybe the size of like a blackbird or a starling. Huh. Hmm. A bird bird. Uh, so I will turn to Marcos and be like, I don't know about that specifically. <clears throat> um, I imagine there are plenty of smaller elementals around here, and I imagine as they are, you know, kind of born of the elemental magic of this plane, they certainly have the power to phase in and out of the rock. Um, I did see a sort of a a, a bird last night, though, which... Yeah, exactly. It strikes me as unusual. I did Me and Nud saw something flying, but I assumed it was like just a bat or... No, it's definitely a bird. No, it... It kind of of chipped to me, like... uh... Yeah, no, I heard it chipped. I don't know why I would see a bird down here in literally a land of caves. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just sort of keep our keep our wits about us. But there might there there might be elemental birds. I don't know. (laughs) 
Wait, wait, hang on. You said the bird like, why would was they... on a rock near camp. Yes. Which rock? Yeah. I'll point to the rock. <laughs> uh, I would like to go over to the rock and make a, a, a survival check to see if I can find any bird tracks. Um, <laughs> bird uh, tracks. I, bird I, tracks. I add my bonus to this because birds are beasts. Go on then. Ha. Make a oh. make a survival check. Uh, cool. Oh, so yeah. this is survival, and I get to add my proficiency twice. So this is a plus thirteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Hell yeah. The particular rock seems to have a section of it which is almost like clay, and you can see a very distinct pair of like small bird footprints at the top of that rock. And it's like blackbird or starling feet. That kind of size, just yeah. Like yeah, not like feet. hooked talons no, or like no weird webbed in, feet. In the ends, no webbing, just two, like three kind of front claws, one back claw. Very, very light impression. It looks like a small songbird landed here. Yes, it was. It was like a little yeah, bird. It... Yeah. And it, you know, as I said, like it, it chipped to me, so I guess. Uh... Well, maybe they live down here. Cave swallows. It's like I said, there Cave could swallows. be birds no, in the elemental weird. plane of Earth, for all I know. <laughs> did you, as well, you uh, say that, you. Um, uh, Andrew. Hello. Deep yes. crows. Sorry, um, um, sorry, I have a bit of a lag, so if I cut okay. you guys off, no, it's my it. fault. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, in the Underdark, is it, do we know of birds? Like, are there birds in the Underdark? I feel like. Uh, I'll give like you bats three. And shit, but bird? Bats, maybe. Birds? Is it avians? Yeah. No. Oh, wait. Yeah, I yeah, no. Okay. I, I think I know what it yet. might be. It's probably be a rock. What? No, um, new. Someone shoot John, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So about the giant bird. So I mean, I'm, I'm going to yeah. the Benny, server. I'm sending a message to Benny to go into his room and Benny. like kick his ass. Um, a <laughs> no, um, rock, rock. The the bird rock doesn't have a K. It's a different. It's okay. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Hmm. As you guys are considering... Hemlock, you don't have to tell him he's right. He's As not. As I said, maybe he's right. See, your problem is, that's enough for Newt to give, like, give him far too much. You've given him hope. Okay. And Tal's given me advantage. Yeah. As, you guys, uh, thanks, buddy. as you guys are considering this kind of bird, you hear a slightly louder... ...shifting of rock. And... ...people speaking. Oh. A ways Shit. down the tunnel, you see... A light source, and it looks to be a small group of maybe seven or eight humanoid shapes. Oh! Followed by one larger one, sitting oh. back on what looks almost like a what's the thing that he'll carry? Litter. Uh, um, uh, yeah, or a palanquin. Yeah, um, on a on a big, big litter. Like, a pangolin. <laughs> there is a, a large humanoid figure, maybe. Eight feet tall, very large and wide, sat on this litter. Um, far off in, in kind of darkness, you can't really make any details, but they seem to have opened up quite a neat gap in this rock and are coming through uh, into the cavern itself. Just a heads up. Can I? Um, can Andrew, we? Will has redeemed a critical success for you. Fuck! Really? Those are not available for the DM. Ah. No, they're not. You have to assign them to a player. Are they not? Are they not? It's, no, not it's not for the DM. Are they not? Damn it! Does it, does, does, it, does it state on the thing that yeah. it is? It should do. Because we want to check, because I, I've, I made that clear. I hope uh, that otherwise, I otherwise, I'd give it to him. Yeah, it says enter the name of the player. Yeah, the player. It doesn't speak uh, to the DM. Sorry, Will. Uh, Wilbur, you can, you can sorry, give Wilbur. it to someone else. Yeah, reassign it. Reassign yeah. it. Cause if it, you really want. You know, if you may, maybe somebody else. <laughs> Uwu. 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 Someone. <laughs> Maybe, well, I don't know. Anyone. Anyway, anyone. Uh, well, no. Do we? Can we hear that? Anyone? Like, can I enough to know quick? what language they're speaking? You can really hear it. It sounds like Terran. Alex, your hand is up. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, David's once was uh, up before me. So you go. Can I David? do a quick pass without trace and get yeah. everybody to get down? Shh. Hide. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Um. Um. And I'm gonna put my middle finger in the ground and cast divine sense. <laughs> divine sense. 
Uh, go ahead and remind me what, what that tells you. Um, 60 feet, it just, it only tells me, uh, three things. Uh, if they are, shit. If they are undead, uh, divine, or fiends, I think. I'm just um, checking. Yeah, it's like celestial fiend undead within 60 feet. The sword at your hip is a fiend. Nothing else pings your attention. Yep, no. That... You would get a little, little crumb of oh, undead from Lily is, as well. There is a crumb of undead from the frog. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be okay, so nothing fucking new, up my uh, new in the horizon. But that you frog's gonna ahead. be ruining my primeval awareness forever. It's from not now just on. the frog; it's also the sword. Like it's not just yeah. Lily. Oh yeah, yeah. I just wanted to. I just like remember we are after demons. I just wanted to check. Yeah, but the yeah. sword's a devil, you know. So that's all right. Like yeah. we're going up against yeah, a right. giant undead lady. And all of her undead minions. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got this, like, oh. effectively like an undead radar jammer <laughs> with us at all times. <laughs> Do you guys um, want to go ahead yeah. and make those stealth checks? No, because I, I know, I know which one is which one. You've all got plus ten. Question. And I have advantage. Question. Does does the crit success have to be used on the next roll? I or think can so, it... yeah. I okay. Think okay. Think well, I guess me and Rowan just have crit yeah, stealth. Crit, then. crit stealth, yeah. And uh, you can add so a third one, yeah, baby. Both of you. For me, that's a thirty-one. Both Rowan and. Uh, it's um, it's it's me also is a thirty-one. And um, uh, I got a crit, so that's a, like a thirty something. Thirty-four. Okay. I got a natural nineteen, so forty-four. Jesus, Jesus Christ! Christ. Christ David. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, David's still so Thanks. hard. He's playing with witch and craft. <laughs> Marcos turns up in Ravnica. For a total oh god! No, it's just a critical fail, Andrew. I mean, you also had three nineties across the rest of the board. So what? What's the total yeah. there? Right. Okay. It's, yeah, pass that trace. It's not fun. It's nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nineteen in four. What? What? I hate it's a nat bars. one. I hate Alex. Bars. Alex. No, it's a nat one. Alex. It should, Alex. It should be. If, if, if me or Rowan rolled a nat one on this check, we would have a stealth of 12. Shut your ass up, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and that's weird. Yeah, that. I know, but like. Oh, like so. Like, like it's, still, it's still a critical fail. All right. However, as you all bunker down this alcove in this large chamber, you are mostly fairly confident that as a group, you have tucked yourselves away very, very well. You see, coming through this darkness lit by a few of the people at the front carrying flaming torches, this procession of humanoids, a few in varying stature, some appear to be human, some appear to be dwarven in stature, but all of them have dark brown and black skin, cracked, uh, most of them actually with shades of dark grey as well, as they all appear to be a collection of Ganassi. They hang at their hips, uh, pickaxes um, and various mining tools, a few of them are carrying and dragging a, a cart um, with like wooden wheels through the space. The litter itself is being carried by four hulking earth elementals, just moving creatures of rock, lifting up this large litter and seated in its back. You see this large creature of kind of darkish, like slate grey. <gasps> slate. Skin. About eight feet tall, very wide, a very kind of flat face, draped in like silk and jeweled. You see like silver necklaces with gems embedded across them. And it's just like leaning back, shouting commands to the elementals that carry this litter. The rest of the people at the front are generally moaning, um, but are kind of gritting their teeth and getting on with the day's work um, as they seem to be moving towards it, through this cavern towards some area where they were going to do some mining. The path behind them is still open uh, and seems to be a, a kind of a formed and opened tunnel. What do you guys like to do? Okay. They um, seem to just be mining. Like what? Think so, well, what, if what if they're mining diamonds? I could ask them if diamonds. there is any ah. good diamonds around here. Hey man, Sierra's yeah, collecting maybe. diamonds. Is it, is it... <laughs> Where can I go to get some? 
Thank you. I yeah, no, that's, that sounds fair. That sounds like a good... I will say I'm somewhat doubtful that they will just kind of tell us that if they're looking for them themselves. They might not be. Well, it depends. They, maybe maybe diamond they, is like like. If they're not, if they're not my non very diamonds, expensive. They might know where some diamonds are. Well, if so if we ask them what they're Herald. mining, and they're not mining diamonds, we can ask them if they know where any diamonds are. And if they do know it, if That's they are mining Marigold. diamonds, then maybe we can trade or help out. Or I don't know. You see them getting yeah. close to like the opposite wall of the cavern, and the large kind of person in the litter kind of reaches their hand up, and the wall itself kind of buckles and goes. Did we n uh, learn? Did we before we went into the plane of Earth? Did we learn anything about the the temperament of the of the elementals that like this that yeah, live here? Because I I'm, I'm I know that Rowan outside knows bits, but I can't remember it, what what we know about it. I think you checked I... with the people in Mario, and yeah. you. And, and that combined with Marigold's knowledge, you're aware that they are not pleasant. They are not necessarily going to slay you on sight, but they are not the most friendly of friendly. Uh, hosts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm doubtful. Yeah. I'm doubtful at how welcoming they're going to be if we just walk out. Should we? Should we maybe either follow them or like go on the tunnel they just opened up? I feel like if they're mining. It might be I like mean, places where we can go. It might be like gems. They're more likely to be more unfriendly if we follow them and they then discover us later, mm. rather yeah. than us being upfront about it. Because the worst thing that can happen now, as long as none of us are confrontational, is we have a bit of an unpleasant conversation and we all walk away. But if we sneak up behind I them and then they find us, that's you know, doesn't give off the best impression. So we should get them their attention so, before they oh, go into shit. the tunnel. Marcus, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god. Uh, so, so both Newt and you, Marigold, can speak stone, right? Like stone people thing. I, I uh, yeah. Terran. Uh, yes. I can speak common and dwarfish. I don't, ah, I guess I'm stone speak person. I don't have that wide of a what of a language pool. Oh, okay. That's fair. This is me. So, he so does, I don't know what that's like. He doesn't, know that he doesn't understand stone. all languages yet. No. <laughs> but I suppose okay, the okay, okay. I, 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 just my bad. speak Terran. Um, no, that's but fair. it looks like thought, the, large, the large elemental is their sort of leader. So. Hmm. The guy um, in the so, so I'll be... Yes. I'll be right behind you, Marigold, but you may go. I'm probably the least threatening looking person in this party anyway. They'll I never have a whole lot of weapons that's true, on me. That's true, that's true. So Marigold's gonna... <laughs> that's also good. Get it when you are. Marigold's, Marigold's gonna like, kind of, uh, catch up with them, I guess. Uh, and, uh, sort of call out in Terran and just be like, well, I guess it's primordial, no. I don't know. Um, we'll sneak up and stay close. And just be like, um, e excuse me. Yeah. Hello. The figure in the in the the, the list kind of like turns their large head, kind of their neck almost sunken into their torso, and kind of turns towards you. Hold up. Wait. <clears throat> they kind of rotate, and as they like shift themselves in position, you see a massive wide torso, and they kind of head kind of almost extends out of their neck, actually like props their head up properly. As they turn to face you, and this large, kind of stony figure, draped in overly extravagant jewels, you see, like as they stand up, yeah. they have like a sash on with like gem in gold, gem in platinum, gem in gold, gem like love, love, with the gaudiest fashion sense nice. you've ever seen. Bling, bling, king. Bling, bling. They like lean down, looking I mean, towards you. You see a pair of jewel-like eyes within the heavy-lidded. Uh, He's features. so much bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> and what is something so small doing in here so low? Hey, no, Hello. hold up. Um, he says, like the rest of his workers who are kind of moving away. I'm, uh, I'm actually here, uh, looking for 
uh, some diamonds. And I wondered, because you look like miners, uh, people who know a lot about rare gems, as I can see yourself uh, are a connoisseur of, good sir, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking for some diamonds, and I wondered if you could possibly direct me to where I might find some. And I promise uh, they are not for the purposes of my own greed or riches. Um, you see, there is uh, a magic spell that I have to cast to get someone very important back, and it requires quite a lot of diamonds, so I'm looking for those. <laughs> That sounds like a truly awful predicament that you find yourself in. He like leans down, there's like a cracking of like grinding stone as his joints rotate down. I'm sure I can help you. Diamonds you seek, well, we are more uh, general in our search. This space here is bountiful but predictable, yes? Perhaps you come with me. You join my little parade. Maybe in enough time, you'll, you'll find enough where you can keep a share, and maybe you'll get what you need. You'll find staying down here most uh, agreeable. <laughs> can I, can I do like an insight check Could to be. see what his like intentions are with this? He wants to, he wants to fucking kidnap you, because <laughs> he seems a little. Sleazy. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> if if I can, it's little. Be yeah, no, definitely. Because uh, I imagine this conversation is happening in Terran, right? Yes. So yeah, you can understand it. Do, you can understand. For some reason, can understand this. I don't know if it's fully clicked that this isn't a language. He's just like, oh, it's a language I know, and hasn't fully like clicked. Yeah. But it, it, it comes. Be... It, it comes like, kind of like that. Kind of like you can. You hear them making stuff, and you see how they're moving. And you just like understand what they're saying because of their body language and like the tonality and how loud it is. And you're like, okay, so they're, probably, they're probably talking about this kind of thing. No, they're probably talking, they're probably talking about this kind of thing. <laughs> I know, I'm pretty confident they are talking about this mm. kind of thing. Damn, um, I'm, I'm really good at reading body language, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, that reading was, body. I'm going to whisper that, was that back a... to like, the rest of the group. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was a 15 insight. 15? He seems. For someone made of rock, very greasy. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can also tell, like, the the mixture of people that are working there. Some appear to be Ganassi, some appear to be humans. Uh, the occasional dwarfs are in there. Um, you notice one creature is like a, like, four feet, three and a half feet tall, not much larger than you, very wide, uh, with, like, stony, light gray skin and, like, thick, thick, like, a, of hair, but I Ooh. think Maribel recognizes it's actually a kind mm. of fey. Um, nice. Called a, a corred. Um, yeah. Some of them appear to be kind of just like yeah. ambi like ambivalently kind of waiting. Um, a, a few of them there, <laughs> the corred and the like one of the humans um, who's kind of like wrapped up in just like not bandaged, like, 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 like thick scarfs and stuff over them, yeah. appear to not be very happy. Um, and as you kind of focus in on their attitude at the situation, you get a, a you get a sense that this guy's intentions are perhaps not the purest. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, David, Marcos, you go before I say. You see, oily say. rock man. Just want to chime in and say asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he sounds like uh, Rissalon. But greasier. Like, kind of <laughs> reading this whole situation and uh, getting the vibe, I'm gonna be like, um, well, I actually have uh, my own capabilities of reaching the things that I need. I just need to know uh, if there is any locations that you're aware of. If you're not, that's absolutely fine. I can go about my way and try and figure it out. Um, but um, I just need to know if there are any nearby. <laughs> he kind of like leans back slightly and what looks like, like almost like a, like a wooden shaft like sticking up from this litter. He like leans back and wraps his hand around it and you can see as he leans back it is the end of a massive maul. An absolutely oh, huge so stone good. and steel hammer. Ah. It's gonna crush me to death. 
I will do you a favor and inform Mm. you that others may take this as an insult that you would turn down my offer of hospitality. In order to ward off such uh, assuming eyes, it is wise to lead with chest full. Convince them that you are not to be uh, trifled with. Nothing like this cowardly. And he kind of gestures towards the crowd in, in front of his litter. Oh, sir, I, I promise you I am not one to be trifled right. with. I'm not very charismatic, but I guarantee you that there are certain capabilities I have at my disposal that can make people very unhappy if I need to. Not something I like to do. I'm not a very violent person. Um, but, Show you know... Um, oh, he interrupts and like holds a hand um, out and about 20 feet away from you, the rock itself of the ground begins to almost like bubble and the rock itself... Oh. And an earth elemental itself climbs out of the floor. Oh shit! And, and just stands 20 feet away from you. Oh! <laughs> you want to find an elemental? Oh lord, you're so easy. Don't My worry, he's not going to attack you back. He's thing. well uh, controlled, but uh, convince right. me you can hold your own. Um, he like sits okay. back and kind of crosses his uh, massive arms. So Marigold is going to be like going through her spells in her head, trying to think of like the thing that looks the most intense. Her highest level spells are healing spells because she's that kind of druid. Um, but oh my god, okay. hit him with the druid uh, craft. <laughs> hit him with the druid craft. Good fairy. Make a tiny flower. Ha! Huh, Twelve it's gonna, berries. It's going to rain tomorrow. Berry. I've been working on a new spell. Bad berry. Oh. <laughs> it's just cherry and berry. Um, <laughs> no, but she <laughs> is. She's going to uh, look towards the um, elemental thing that has come in front of her, uh, and probably the showiest thing she has is tidal wave. Uh, so she's gonna cast a tidal wave, uh, and it's gonna be the biggest it can be, so 30 feet long, 10 feet wide, 10 feet tall tidal wave that's gonna, like, sweep over this elemental. Alrighty. It actually rolled garbage on it, on it. I think it's, it's a strength save to get, like, blown backwards, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's a dex save. Dex save, cool. It rolled a one. Um, oh boy. This cool. Uh, it, it will take 4d8 bludgeoning damage also. <laughs> cool. Um, ah. It, uh, you brandish your wand out towards the space and water just erupts from its tip and blasts forward a huge volume of this torrent of white and kind of, kind of white foam pouring at its tips with the curling wave that smashes into this rock creature, sending it reeling backwards and like clattering like a pile of rocks on the floor. It... Uh, it'll yeah, take ni- 19 bludgeoning damage. All right. <laughs> um, it like clatters to the ground as a bunch of rocks and like begins to stand up. The doubt, make a, make a persuasion check the advantage. Oh, okay. I'm so scared of this man. I'm so scared he's just gonna put me in a sack. Oh, Hemlock, I think it's fine we're lifting all around here. Hemlock, Hemlock, I have an hour already. Yeah, you yeah. guys are so wait. ready to like. Should yeah, we're all this guy. Can we? She's tidal wave. She's tidal wave. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> a show of strength. Hold on. No, but what the? F- uh, so persuasion. So that's, uh, fighting uh, fighting. that's a f- a fourteen. Ooh, 14. Oh, oh, oh. Which for me is good. That's yeah. yeah. His arms really have plus two. And you're traveling out here all by yourself. Well, I'm actually meeting up with some friends at some point. But yes, currently. Totally at wrong. this current <laughs> moment in time, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I mean, that's not the highest level (laughs) I can do, but I'm more of a healing person, so, you know, um, a lot of my 
high, the most strongest magic is, is healing magic. I'm certain you would fetch a good price, but I'm a little too busy to tangle with something as barbed as you. Head back along the tunnel. You'll find Stug. Oh. Maybe you can find what you need there. Thank Carry you. On. The group begin to continue on the tunnel. The elemental that you blasted just kind of return to a pile of rubble that begins to kind of like return. <laughs> Marigold. Marigold will like walk up to the stones and just be like, sorry. <laughs> to, to the stones. The bubble like, it, like bubbles so up stones. once more and like a, a tiny ruby goes. Oh, thank you. It's like what, like <laughs> 10 gold. It's like tiny little. I know it's um, tiny, but it's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you it. very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. This guy kind of continues on his way. The tunnel remains open both behind and where he then goes. I'll I'll um, wait until he's like out of view mm-hmm. and earshot, uh, and then like run back up to everyone and be like, "Well, um, he said we should go to Stug down that tunnel that." Was he came through, and maybe we'll find what we need there. Oh, did you find it? Fuck. Okay. Well, yeah. he. Did you? He wanted, why did you? He he thought I was traveling alone, and he thought he he. Right. Wondered why I was by myself and how I was defending myself if right. I was so small. And I told him I was like, well, I'm not very charismatic, but I guarantee I can like, you know, give something a good wallop if I need to. And he asked me to prove it, so I did. Um, I, I have and I think I think he was eyeing me up to sell me. Yeah, it like I think he was, he was going to sell me. Um, but he did. New, 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 I have a question. Mm-hmm. What? How did you understand what was being said? What do you mean? Because his body language can go a long on? way, but not uh, yeah, that long of a way. That 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 was not, you know. Wait, did you? I was speaking in Terran. Uh, hmm. It's done. Hmm. Um, sure? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look to new and I'm gonna yes. say I'm gonna say in Orkish. Can you understand what I'm saying? Well, yeah, of course I can. Um, that that wasn't that wasn't common, new. You. No, that's common. Common. You, <laughs> mm, I'm, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm gonna ask new in Elvish. New, do you speak Elvish? No, I don't speak Elvish. What are you talking about? That was in Elvish. Wait, no. Okay, let. No, uh, and I'm gonna say in Sylvan. <laughs> um, this is the language Ooh. of the Feywild. You've never been there. No, that sounds more like common to me. Th- that was that... Sylvan. You... No, what did she. What? She said something about the language of the Feywild, but that was so... common. Yes, yeah, she said. No, no, it was not. No. Right, I'll speak in Inferno and just say, so you, just you, you kind of like <laughs> get the gist of most everything. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, do you just, are you yeah. just saying things along just to say, do you just say yes? No, I'm not just saying yes, I can understand. You're just saying yes to everything. Okay, Newt, I know, okay, yeah, I know he's you've weird. never, I know you've never done Inferno, this before. understanding Inferno, why? Okay. Try, try and say something in Primordial. I've... The language that oh, we were just speaking now with that big rock man. But, hmm, I don't know how to speak primordial though. This is what well, you can understand okay, it. Okay, hold on. What about if I talk, say something in dwarvish? Okay. Right. I think Marcos, you understand dwarvish, okay, right? Okay, go ahead. I don't... Yes, I do. I speak dwarvish. Uh, so in dwarvish, it will be like. So, you understand what I'm saying, but the rest of you probably don't know what I'm saying, right? Probably not. But you actually all do. Wait, what? Um, so one of the features of it as well is that, um, any creature that can understand a language can understand what you say. Oh shit. What the (laughs) fuck? That's what, that's what you meant by not having secret conversations. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like it was more like I understood the intent and not the language. I feel like it was kind of like I understood the intent of each word you were saying. It was weird. How are you doing this? That not just sounded like Dwarvish to me. You see, that, but I, you just know every language now? 
Because you understand. Like crumbling of rubble kind of collapses from one of the. So let's, we'll, we'll talk about this as we move. Let's, let's, um, we'll, we'll, walk and talk. Um, wait, do you yes, understand that? Down the tunnel. Walk and talk. To where? What was it called again, Andrew? Stug. 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 Is that just S T U J G G? Not J. Stug. Stug. Is it oh. Stug. 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 All right. As you guys walk and talk, everybody meets dog. relatively rapidly that it seems that whatever Newt hears or says can be understood. I think just suddenly Which is weird. in all languages um, overnight. <laughs> you've been in cipher for a long time. It's really <laughs> um, you did, follow did you, this did you read like a book or something? I you follow this? Fairy book. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> You follow this tunnel for... A good chunk of time, maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours or so, of following this very straight tunnel. It appears this whole stretch was made by this elemental entity and his posse just holding their hand out and forcing the rock out of their way. Until eventually, you see small, like, shards of open air, wind blowing through them as the tunnel eventually opens up into a larger a larger cavern vertically but it remains fairly narrow but you see among the curving natural rock straight lines and shapes and as you get closer you see flickering orange of firelight illuminating a vertical town set in the two walls of this crack in the rock in this open cavern and I need to just drag you. A debug, just boog. You see this place? Stairs line oh. the wall and go back and forth up into the rock itself. You can see where iron grates. Some of them iron. You see higher up, gleaming mm. yellowish gold of grates and walkways. You see surrounding each of the flaming braziers that light the space are embedded with gem of a dazzling variety it's like someone got an, like an assorted pack and just threw it at everything and every little kind of adornment of this small entryway to the town is just a jewel nothing as extravagant necessarily as emeralds and rubies and diamonds but the lesser gems of opals of tanzanite of various lesser crystals decorate this whole space in a strange contrast of dark rock and shadow and firelight and extravagant jewelry. And we will pick up here as you enter Stug after a short break. Ooh. So we're gonna pop off, nice. the house, get some food, get some water. Oh boy. So you guys hydrate. go get a snack, hydrate your stay off. Or is that a hydrate from Tal? Hydrate or else. That was me oh, telling the chat nah. to hydrate. Ah, then I'm free. Get screwed. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll be back here in about half an hour or so, so go get yourselves a drink and snacks and things, and come yeah, back okay. here for 9 oh, p.m. There is that is actually a hydrate from Tal. Hey! Okay, right, fine. Now I'm obligated. Nah. Nicely done, Tal. <laughs> well done, Tal. Obligated? Obliged. Um, <laughs> eh, same thing. Eh. Are they both words? I don't know. So, so, obligated is a word. As is obligato, obligato. obligato. There we go. Exactly. Um, obligated no, obligado is a means word. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> obrigada. Obrigado, yeah, obrigado. <laughs> Alright. We'll probably continue riffing with dumb puns for another half an hour, so you guys go take a break and come back here when we get done with that and get back into the D&D. Thanks for joining us so far, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye! Thanks everybody. See you soon. Hello, everybody. Oh, well, 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 welcome back, everyone. Hello. Hope Maybe you guys got some hide. aqua in you, got some snacks if you've needed. <laughs> Taken care of yourself because it's important. Um, yeah. I had some sensation. Rowan, what is that happening. fist? What's happening? I'm punching Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I <laughs> see. A valid response in any situation. I'm, I'm off camera because I'm eating. I'll be back on very soon. Hell yeah. No worries. All r- 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 righty. So, where we left off. And a hydrate. <sighs> Imagine having narrative momentum. Imagine. Not no, in it's this fine. Game. It's before we start. No momentum. Not in the. Not in the stream. Imagine being allowed to finish a description. 
Not um, even nah. in this group. Try running a suspenseful <laughs> gothic horror game with you lot. Fucking hell. But, but, uh, how high can we jump? Uh, Fuck <laughs> off, Jordan. <laughs> Like, what is one day we will have screenshots of me saying fuck off to everyone in this group via the captions. Except me. That's true. Because you love me and why no. would fuck off? <laughs> Where's that X button? Hello, Rhythm. Hey, Rhythm. How you doing? All right. How you doing, Rhythm? Right. So, where we left off before the break, the Soul Guard discussing an apparent new ability of Newt's to understand and comprehend languages and to be understood and after a tense encounter with a Dao, an elemental entity and his entourage you guys are on the path to Stug, this seeming town within the elemental plane of Earth as you get in through the outskirts you see as we described earlier on, this kind of vertical crevasse with a town built into its walls, archways and bridges across, bedecked in burning braziers of gold, surrounded in jewels, contrasting in colour to the dark rock and shadow of the rest of the space. You also see people of, of a very sporadic variety. You see many Ganassi. Almost everyone here is some form of earth and Ganassi, of various colours of rock. Some have cracked skin as if they are ever undulating themselves. Some have very smooth, polished marble like features. Many have a combination, have like a dark grey granite almost, but with a vein of some kind of crystal or ore within it, building up and co coursing around their features. You see them filling these, well not streets, but the space. And you see this is actually very, very, this is not really a town. This is much closer to an outpost. You see maybe the entrances to a dozen maybe maybe 20 or so different buildings or so built into this out outcropping and you see at the top above and center above this outpost a culmination of bridges that seems to come up to a central platform visible to the entirety of this out and you see all these people lining their balconies lining these bridges looking up towards this space you see at the top one of these large elemental figures bedecked in flowing red and gold. Everything is bedecked. I know. Um, bedecked. Bedecked. <laughs> Everything is bedecked to the hell. Bedecked. 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 They have like dark Bidet. red uh, robes flowing from their form. They seem to be floating above slightly this stage. You see a cloud of dust and rubble kind of coursing around like a harsh tornado beneath them. They reach out their hands and Marigold and Newt, you understand. Welcome all to coming here today. It is time to once again take up the hunt. We have gifts to give. We have things to chase. And I present to you now the chieftain of this place, Emerald, who will guide us forth to glory once more. He holds out a massive stony arm to one side. And you hear the crowd, and even those of you who don't speak, uh, primordial, you can see the crowd is excited. The longer you're here, you begin to see there are elements of festivity here. People are holding drinks. Uh, people are kind of grins spread across their faces, cheeks kind of swell up uh, into rosy, excited grins. TPIB? TPIB. TPIB, already... guys. <laughs> you, you see what... These guys what... celebrate Brindra. <laughs> you, you, you see what is essentially just bunting made of gold, like stretched out across between the between the space. They seem to be like small Note. enchanted like lanterns which glow but are Note to self. Steal some gold bunting for hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is it is a very strange contrast. This whole place is of dark rock and shadow with splashes of extravagance. The whole crowd swells into a cheer as you kind of find someone being bustled about now by the number of people who have come out for you see a lot of them carrying weapons. You see many of them carrying like thick backpacks on their on their backs. Stepping out into the center, you see one of these humanoid figures, these Dao, who appear to be fairly common um, and always swathed in finery. He steps out. He has almost jet black stone skin with a cracking vein of emerald crystals that kind of. Sh 
protrude out from like the wrist up to each elbow and flare out the same kind of pokes from the shoulders. But he seems to be standing almost timidly. Um, he comes out to the front. I mean, no disappointment. Uh, please settle down. And like everyone begins to go strangely quiet. The kind of the flying one that announced him kind of settles down to the side of the stage. You have looks slightly taken aback. I know we're all excited for the coming of our quarry. Only once in centuries does such a hunt present itself, and we of Stug have made our honor of joining the hunt. It has come to my attention that a dangerous group of fanatics join this hunt, and I fear that we do not have the numbers nor strength to contest not only the Zaratan's hunt, but also with these fanatics. I saw that coming! Marigold, what are they saying? Um, I yeah. think <clears throat> they would normally do some kind of hunt today. Um, I think right? they'd, they would normally be hunting the Zaratan, um, but there's some fanatics, which I assume are the Lich Queen's people, um, and they don't, want to, they don't want to fight them, so they're not going to go on the hunt. Um, and I think it's very disappointing <clears throat> for everyone. Well, we could go on ah. the hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we, we could we could offer to go on the hunt for them. That's good point. You're whispering like this, and you hear like, the towns where the people are also in this kind of like hushed muttering and questioning. The there is like a, a few moments of like horribly stilted silence from this central stage. This one they refer to as Emerald seems to be very very aware of the disappointment that is spreading through this crowd. And it wait, builds to an anger. Wait, wait. But if you shout out and be Should like, I, I was, Look, I we know these tonight. fanatics and we want to help you. Yeah, 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 and and yeah, yeah, yeah. if you help us out to get a little yeah, bit of that. diamond as well, we will fight away these fanatics so that you can do okay. the hunt. Um, I'll say something. Yeah. Um, and Marigold will kind of like. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold you up. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Stand on my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll literally just like, I'll just like hand on your back. And like your leg, it just like holds you on my yeah. shoulder. Oh, yes. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, and like I assume I'm like now somewhat raised. You're, you're just about you're visible-ish. Yeah, about sure. six feet off the ground. <laughs> um, and I will yeah. sort of stick my hands up uh, and in Terran, um, just be like, um, I I might we might be able to help you with this. Um, we are the Soul Guard. We're obviously not from here. Um, but we have also come in search of the fanatics and the Zaratan, um, so we may be able to help you with the hunt, getting rid of the fanatics, make, for they are our enemy. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> or a <laughs> check, up to you. That's so fucking cute. I love having, oh I love having a good charismatic speaker in this fucking town. That was so fucking cute. Out. That was so cute! Persuasion and performance are the same for me, let's so... Let's go, let's go, let's go! Marigold, 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 take guidance! Oh, Marigold, I'm giving you this. guidance! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Come on! I don't know what you said, so but it sounded good. Ah, uh, uh Rockstone, too! With, with her, Rockstone, ro Stone Rock. Don't know, um, Crumble. 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 Tectonic, That's a 17! Oh. 17. <laughs> New turns you guys are, guys, don't stop that, that's racist. Is it? It's really rude, yeah. You, like, you shout out and you're worried in the moment, you always feel your voice falter as you try and... So cringe. ...speak out into this open and alien space. So scary. A few of the people around you kind of turn and like... Do you wanna? Um, <laughs> your voice carries and is just about heard by the stage itself. You see, make an inside check for me, actually. Oh, okay. Ooh. Cool. Uh, 14. 14. Emerald seems to still have, there is something off about him. He's, he's clearly nervous about something. You very plainly see across the face of the one that announced him. 
the one with the the dark rock, and this one as he kind of like he swirls back onto the stage, kind of hovering above, and almost kind of like drifts off of it, and he looks down mm-hmm. at people. He like turns down towards all of you. <laughs> Strangers in this land offer aid. Would we take such dishonor to outsource our glory? Oh no! No, you <laughs> coward! He like not what it is. bits with <laughs> the most with utter venom. Oh. Even those of you that don't speak this, you can hear yeah. his tone as he turns toward him. This chieftain. He's not happy. <laughs> Emerald kind of winces, but oh. doesn't argue back. And immediately you hear a worried large number of people go, "Yeah." And oh, no. while a few people did seem to respond positively to your entrance, <laughs> oh no, there seems to be a, a culture here, uh, and this this guy oh, yeah. is playing to it. Shit! <laughs> I came prepared to bequeath upon bequeath upon you a mount for this hunt of great skill to lead us to victory, and you back down for some fiendish fanatics or something with no details. Uh- Can I, can I, can I, as he's, like, talking about some fiendish fanatics or whatever, um, I will continue Mm -hmm. and just be like, these are not just any fanatics. These are the servants of a powerful lich queen who desires to once again bring the children of the sun, the titans, to the upper lands of this world. These are not any normal fanatics. They are incredibly powerful magical beings, and I, for one, think that your leader is very smart, for this would be a death wish. Make another persuasion check. <laughs> Didn't you just say you were gonna go fight this? Why are you talking like you're in a fucking <laughs> Yeah. Why are you talking like you're in a fucking I, like, political debate? I, I can't really tell what's going on. Can I pull out one of Ivar and Far's scales out of the bag of holding and hold it up and be like, we have slain a mighty red dragon before. If you allow us to join you on this hunt and take down these people that are stopping you from hunting, then we will surely win and glory will be had. You will translate this as he's speaking, just in case. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as, go I was going to say. Take, as, take, have advantage think... with, with with the oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It sounded like okay. like a bit like um, getting riled up. So I was just trying to say, I didn't. I I just right, I don't right. know. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. No, that's um, cool. That's cool. That's, that's cool. gonna be. Right. Fifteen. Fifteen. Hmm. You you feel a little bit of traction. As you have been speaking out and proclaim your abilities to take on this foe, oh, I hate it. a number of the, people, so the people closest to you seem to be kind of interested. They're like, "Huh?" They seem to be like the average Joes of the town. They're like, "Wow, they killed a dragon! <laughs> you sure they killed a dragon? They're the Norian scale." Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, the upper like balconies. A few people on these like upper ledges and bridges have kind of started noticing you a little bit now. Um, you're not just some random hyped voice among the crowd. You are, you are drawing attention to yourself now, for better or worse. I am literally shaking in real life. <laughs> <laughs> the Dao that seems to be kind of biting back at Emerald turns down towards you. You are right not to be fearful. We will hunt regardless of Emerald's cowardice. Join us if you wish, stranger. The road may well be bloody, but we shall find glory ourselves. And maybe the house of the chieftain should be empty when we return. And like Emerald kind of gonna die. Like still kind of grimacing. Like doesn't respond. Like like he he you can see him being thrown under a under a bus right now, and he's kinda just accepting it. Um <laughs> Okay. But the people around begin to get riled up once more. You hear them begin to chant, Crucible! So crucible! And you seem oh, to no. get the information that crucible the Dao's, doesn't sound good. The Dao's name that is kind of taking control of this is oh. called Crucible. That's a fucking, that's a badass that's a name. name. It's a great name. Mm-hmm. It's a very good and name. Then, that's back toward the stage, okay. he pushes Emerald back and grasps 
hanging from his back, he like turns around and pulls a mole from his back and shoves him to one side. Oh. Ruth blows, flies back over the stage, <laughs> over the town itself, raises them all in hand, and just yells. And the rest of the town start yelling in return. Yeah, I, I yell too. I yell too. I don't know. Yeah! Woo! Ashura! What? I'm hey, I think it worked. Let's go fuck no, up the. No! What? Right? Like. This is isn't it what's happening? Like did what they not want don't they want I mean, I mean they they want to go and the fight, but they're they're going to get it's not going to go well. Well that's okay. And also they they're, they're the... pushing out their chieftain and it's not Well that's oh. not very good. Look, I will say we don't I mean, I mean we don't know what he did, maybe he did any bad thing. But how how did the, the chieftain guy you said he, he seems mentioned like these... he knows something. Well we should go talk to him. Well as you're considering yeah, going we can go to talk to the chieftain him. crucible waves a small once more and yells out we leave in six hours gather your weapons okay we got your that. supplies we ride the we definitely need to go talk to him <laughs> yeah, yeah we definitely got so much time all of the chieftain on his own back and flies kind of shaking an arm in the air and you see yeah. a bunch of like there are there are, you mean begin, having been here for a minute now you begin to pick out there are there are people among this crowd who seem to be particularly armed and they are the ones that are responding when he yells out to yeah. go on the top. It doesn't seem like everyone in this town is going to march as a whole. There seems right. to be like particular it's bros. There is a bit of a bros club within this yeah. town. That it's, are kind of... it's the frat of the town. <laughs> there is a bit of a there is a bit of a hunting frat, and they're going to yeah. get yeah. up, but they still get to go hunting. Uh, that's the hydrate from Wilbo, by the way. Hydrate from Wilbo. Thank you, Wilbo. Okay. Hydrate from All right. Wilbo. So can so... I? So is it? So we should just go talk to I'm, to I'm the gonna, guy. Yeah, and... I'm gonna go and talk to. His name is Emerald. Um, Marcos, put me down. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, and Marigold is gonna like weave her way through people's legs and stuff um, if she can to can. like get to the stage. Yeah, follow. Yeah, let's follow along. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's, um, it takes you a minute. You're, you're winding you should... up several staircases and bridges and stuff to get towards it. Yeah. And you can see people are beginning to filter out, which makes traveling through here kind yeah. of awkward as like the crowds are moving against you. Um, but you push through nonetheless. Marcos and Ashura, I think you have the two highest perceptions. Yeah. Yep, 23. Um, do. You notice. Uh, 22. There is. Many people seem excited. You notice Thank one you. person who seems particularly not excited. Um, and you specifically notice ah. with your super keen eyes. Um, when Crucial mentioned a, a, an, a an amazing mount uh, for the hunt, he seemed to grimace. No one else seemed to react to that at all, but he seemed to, they seemed to kind of react to that. And you can see this person kind of walking toward you, not like at you, but like past you along one of these walkways. Uh, and they kind of, they give you a look because you drew plenty of attention. <laughs> What's your deal? We want to stop the people Is that, that are going to get the heart of uh, Zaratan. Why? So that was because incoming. they are evil <laughs> and in service to a Lich Queen. We said. If you've got yeah. a coin, come find yeah. him in the yeah. In the where? He you know, doesn't repeat himself. Where? Like, gestures Glad to one of these buildings have set in the rock and you see kind of a an archway where a lot of people are actually kind of beginning to flood into, uh, where the archway itself seems to be made of glass, like blocks of glass. And, and across it is oh, a right. sign that Newt, you can magically read. Um, uh, wait, Newt actually can't, can't read? Can't. I can oh, only notice no. that spoken stuff. Spoken only, yeah. yeah. Marigold can probably read it though. Newt, yeah, yeah, you can read it. It says in primal across the top, the glass jaw. Um, okay. Ooh. And this, this, okay. this figure, who is an Earth Ganassi, I'm like, Pretty standard slate grey skin, broken with like a few like patches of like, like pebbles kind of poking through the skin. Peebles. Uh, <laughs> and he he talked to us in common, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I um, think okay, okay, okay. Maybe people sure. here can speak common. Um, awesome. They understood some of them understood yeah, it's, Marcos it's about the it. dragon scale, so Yeah. He progressed before through new the crowd uh, translated. Yeah, okay. it, it, it by the way, good, um, you... a good variety of people here do also speak. Um, oh, cool. um, um, by the way, um, Newt Marigold, did you understood what they were? So they were, they were so trying to hunt. Essentially, they, they were going to hunt 
they want to go and hunt the Zaratan. They're going in six hours. And right. they were going to give, like, Emerald, the, I assume that the, the chieftain was supposed to, like, lead them. Right. And they were going to give him some sort of amazing oh, yeah. mount. Um, and then uh, he to ride into obviously battle? didn't want to go because of the fanatics, um, which we assume are Kaiser's oh, yeah. people. Um, and he seems he seems very anxious and upset about it which is fair enough they are lich queen servants um but i don't know what he knows so i want to go and talk to him to see what he knows because also we want to go to the zaratan so uh, he must know something i don't know i'm nervous well, for him okay. he seems very sad. No, no 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 okay that's that's good that's good all right um let's go talk to emerald uh that guy and then after that we go talk to the guy that wanted us to talk to yes. him i don't know why but let's just we have six hours i guess well, should we maybe know, move he also forward seems to maybe know something i think gonna, if, if, like, if he reacted when they the hunt the stuff, so. sorry Ashura, you go yeah no 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 very no, noisy cool. down here it's, i can't we're looking yeah it's 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 kind of complicated uh it's, it's the echo um no, so wait, so we're looking for the heart of Zarutan, right? So, them, you know, it's, we, they're not gonna, no, it's fine, it's fine. We, they're not gonna steal the heart, right? That's, that's for another thing. Well, all we, we have to do is just get to well, it they, first. Because if we, well, I don't yeah, know if well, so we should maybe leave here before the heart. Out. I don't know if they want the heart exactly. specifically. But, but we just we want to make sure ask. that pieces people yeah. don't get it. Let's, let's go quickly then. Yeah. We, we have six hours. Okay, let's go. Well. So where are you going we're for that? We've got time. To Emerald, Emerald. Yeah, on right. the stage, I think. Emerald. He, yeah, Emerald. He, he has left the stage, um, but yeah. you can see where he's heading. At the top part of this outpost, there is a house that seems to be of a different stone to the rest. This is of a dark black stone to the rest of the town. This house has more like light grays and almost like reddy hues to it. And it kind of like almost protrudes cool. from the rock and a bridge kind of goes up from one side, curls around a small balcony, and is the only entrance to this place. Cool. There is a uh, solid gold gate across the door. Um, damn. You, you see him, like, oh. walk up. A pair of servants that are standing by the side of the gates kind of look at him with just filthy looks and, like, leave the gates. Um, he kind of puts his way in. I want to, like, run up behind him, as I did with the <laughs> other guys, I guess. Paragold <laughs> is just, like, running up to people. <laughs> Easy um, enough. Like, um, e excuse me, Ch Chieftain Emerald? Yes, what is it? Hello, um, <clears throat> I think you obviously saw me earlier. Um, oh god, you. I No, I, I promise I don't mean any harm, I'm not here to shame you. I'm sorry that that happened to be the result of what we were saying, but I understand why you are concerned for your people. We know who the fanatics are that you're talking about. And I wasn't lying, they are servants of a Lich Queen. They want the heart of Zaratan. It's bad enough you shout them at this in the middle of the town. If you have something to say, let's say it inside. Okay. I didn't you... want to assume we were okay to come into your house. You're more okay to do with oh, my house. Ugh. Just come in for now. Otherwise you yeah, bring the rest. Right. Come everyone. So... Okay. So... Yeah, we're open right, okay. Solid like copper and steel doors, like almost like marbled in terms of like silver and reddish brown coloration, pushes them open and leads you inside a very, like a aggressively luxurious entryway. It is like a floor of solid pristine marble. There are like reaching like hands in different like poses and like kind of like some aggressive claws, some in like gentle kind of reaching motions, kind of out of the walls. All of them carved from gem. Like solid, like quartz and jade, like hands and all these various poses coming out of the walls. So he leads you down into a side room, which appears to be like a a sitting room, an atrium uh, type place. There is room to sit. He beckons you all in. So you're not from around here. What is it that you have? come for it, just to stop these who so how do you <sighs> speak so we've come here for two things um 
but the main thing that involves you um, is the Zaratan. Um, now, the Lich Queen Kaiser, um, who, whose fanatics, followers, whatever, um, are here, and they are also after the Zaratan because they need the heart of the Zaratan to complete a ritual to bring back the titans that, well, make up the earth now, but she wants to destroy the planet again. I don't know anything about this Kaiser. Yes, Someone I know. came to me and said that if I led a hunt for the Zaratan, it would be the ruin of this entire place. That they would slay oh. the hunters, return here, and bathe it who, in their blood. Who, said who was it? It was someone who looked like him. In gestures uh, for the Shura. Yes, uh, that... Uh, a drow? The, a drow that, man? Yeah. Uh, what was why his is name? He, why is he pointing at me? Lord Iseko? It's Iseko, it's yes. Yeah. Um, is, what, is this yeah. conversation happening? He, just for clarification, is this conversation? Yeah, this is yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, 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 I wouldn't have. Ah. I wouldn't have done this whole conversation. In turn. <laughs> right. That feels I just, just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought that was entirely. Yeah, I thought that was entirely. No, okay. In, in oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, no. A guy named Seko kind of. Uh, yeah. Does he look like a dick to you? <laughs> Yeah, really so I, it feels like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's um, that's. Didn't you have a run in? That's fair. But. Oh yeah, no, I did, I did. Yes, twice. Well, we twice. we all did. Um, uh, when we were on the way back from the tribe over the mountains. Um. Oh, did you guys meet? I don't. Uh, I don't think. Well, we, well, we didn't. We didn't no, we see met, him. We no, we met. Saw we the met. aftermath. Ashura and Kaelin yeah. met him briefly. And we met, yeah. we saw him briefly yeah, and when, uh, he, he came on a in... shadowy horse to our estate. Oh, yes. Oh, that did happen. That's right, that's right. And when we tried to we tried to stop Caitlyn, he was then just took her away. That's right, took yes. them away. Yeah, took them away, yes. Um, but he, he is uh, yeah, one away. of the people who follows uh, Kaisa. Uh, yeah, she is, I don't <laughs> yeah, know if you're familiar dependent. with the Lich, but they are... Uh, I, I assume, like, we all know what a lich is now, right? <laughs> in very, in, in like, like, powerful undead something. Yeah, she, she's a, the nature she's of the a very mythology. powerful undead being, um, and I, I assume you're aware of the, you know, the whole titans and the thing and Petra Luna and all of that? Well, maybe not. I mean, um, maybe not. This is not. The... Yeah. Uh, yes. It's so she essentially world, wants. It's adjacent. She essentially wants to repeat that, but with the the titans only. Um, As undead. All of this has essentially. I'm sorry, but very little to do with me. Right. The titans but, West. But the I'm whole point concerned... that that was that's the reason that the fanatics are here because they want the heart of the Zaratan to do that ritual. We are here because we're trying to stop them from doing that. And I don't think it's a good idea. You Obviously, you know it's not a good idea for your people to go there. Um, I don't know how else to stop them. That crucible man seems to have stop a them. bit of a following. If if I may speak, um, one one point I could made, make is um, if you tell us where you think the Zaratan is, we can at least be you know, um, we can arrive before the town people arrive and if we have to meet up with, you know, those those fanatics, as you say, um, at least they won't know that your city has come to f- come for the heart for, for the Zaratan, so we would be the only one they would witness If I could tell you where it so was... So if we leave a bit early if I could tell you where it was, it would be much of a hunt. It wouldn't one be much of a hunt. Two, you still wouldn't beat them. Mm. We now have a command over this realm that you could not match, a pace that you could not compare yourself. Do you mean like so, when you so the wave your hand haven't... and your rock move? Exactly. I think. Yeah, we saw that. The mount that Crucial mentioned is a it was a gift. 
He's been vying for favor for months. Seems he's been working in not just my circles. I believe he obtained a Zorn. It's a native creature that can sniff out gems like a... I, something that sniffs out things efficiently wherever you come from. A dog? Um, I don't know what that is. Um, a I... loxodon! <laughs> Show that! Oh, I've read about them in this fairy tale book that hope gave me. <laughs> Jordan, that was so funny. Underrated. I don't think people don't exist. Uh, if it is in a fairy not, story, no, it, it might not be real. But they can smell yeah, very yeah. well. Yeah. Why would someone no, just write I... it in a book and lie? You would, okay, cool. You would be you surprised. You to chase down these fanatics and slay them. You. You. I'm. Sh I don't. Excuse I'm not me. doubting your capabilities, yeah. but you're aware that you look like a joke, right? Look, who? I might have... be stupid. But Which I'm one of us? Which we one? Because he said you. Yeah. We have done it before, you understand. But all of us? <laughs> no, I yeah. don't understand. I don't know you. Well, you oh, dragon scale. It's true. Well, I don't know what the fuck you are. Hello, you I am Marcos Estreva of the Soul Guard. Don't mistake me for caring. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> okay, you're fun. <laughs> right. Threatened my people, and now I've been deposed by my upstart second in command. Well, then let us help. There's nothing you can do to help. Yeah, well, what's the plan here? You will Look, not. So you're just gonna wallow and alone and. You Look, will we both. We both have a horse. Are you just gonna wallow race? here? Yeah. You will not match Crucible for speed in this land. He has a Zorn, and a Zorn can sniff okay. out gems. And there's nothing well, quite more I mean... like it. I'm still speaking, girl. Nothing Excuse else. me. I, I know you might be a chieftain okay, that's, that's of not... an earth tribe, but I don't see you silencing any of my friends that way, and I don't appreciate it. Well, then leave. Don't take any advice I have, knowledge of the realm that is my home that you are completely new to, and leave. Or may I continue speaking and offering advice about how you may achieve your goals? I mean, that could help. It appeared to me you were not offering advice, sir, but seemingly demoralizing yeah. comments about how we cannot possibly achieve this goal. If you have advice, I would appreciate it. I would get to it if you would stop interrupting. Speak. You will not. He give. He turns his head towards you with a, like, this like a similar like, like a, like, like a parent being like, watch it. You will not beat Crucible for speed. Not in this realm. The thing I fear okay. is not the loss of the hunting party. They will go out seeking danger. That is expected. To die in the hunt is an honor. The threat that worries me is if they were to do so, this Iseko promised to return here and slay people that live here. All of them. If you can follow Crucible and slay this Isako before he can enact his promise, then you are led toward the Zaratan by some way, and you encounter your foe. I have another question to, to rebound on this. Um, are the hunters are going to use the mount to find the Zaratan? Is that it? The Zorn sniffs out gems. The Zaratan right. is a beacon of elemental power. The Zorn will be drawn to. Okay. All right. S okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna speak in Elvish to Newt and who whoever understand Elvish. <laughs> uh, so so we could potentially kind of just s steal the mount, right? And just go be before them. Well, in Elvish, I thought yeah. we just wanted to get here and stop the Isiko guy and his friends from getting the heart anyway. Like, to be honest, what he's just yeah. said, I what mean, we were going to do anyway. Just go with the hunt and then kill Isiko. New goes to respond. That's fair, we don't that. really need. This guy would be able to understand what he's saying, and it's like. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, if, I, 
if right. I were to if I were yeah, to catch yeah. sight of, of you about to speak, I'm gonna look at you and telepathically in your head say, Tell me what you want to say and I'll repeat it. <gasps> oh. <laughs> this link! Oh <laughs> this is the big Bitch. brain secret network. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And thus Lee Marigold understands okay. none okay, of me. this because she doesn't speak Elvish. No. <laughs> No, um, Marigold. You, you, you send the translation uh, telepathically to Marigold. I will, yeah. But, um, I, I will become say, a Wi-Fi router. A Wi-Fi router. <laughs> um, I've, I've had a thought. Uh, continuing um, in Elvish. Um, if this Crucible Man is the most skilled, could we not have ways mm -hmm. to endear ourselves to him? After all, I have ways of seeing things without mm -hmm. just eyes. That and also he seemed to, from Marigold, his points of view, he seemed to be happy the fact that we were going to partake in the hunt. I will, I will turn, I'll turn back to Emerald and kind of say in common. How difficult would it be for someone? How do I word this? I have ways of being able to see beyond what should be natural. Do you think that would be useful for a man like Crucible? For someone unfamiliar with this place? I... perhaps? If you speak of a scrying type of magic, it is something we are familiar with. It is, yes. To my understanding, you need to be familiar with a place or a person. Well, as long as I do not need to be intimately familiar, as long as I know perhaps what it slightly looks like, I can find out where it is. A good enough uh -huh. descriptor. And to my crucible... understanding, it would show you an image of the creature, no doubt embroiled in rock and stone. How informative that would be for you, I don't know. But mm. could be, perhaps. <clears throat> if we if we go along with the hunt, I'll kind of say to everyone. We do go along with the hunt, we go along with our own intentions. We find a way, if we can, to take on whoever might be here. Iseko and whoever might be alongside him. We do not need to be the ones to... The only need of this Zaratan we have is to take its heart and potentially destroy it. We don't even need to take it with us. No, that's true. We just need to make sure that, you know, so we can't we just leave it here. We have to take it either with us or, yes, destroy it. I agree. We can be part of the fight to take it down. It it... Might, might I yeah. chime in that while stealing the mount might be a problem uh, it would also be very useful for you know finding all of those diamonds that's also a point mr emerald if i may speak this crucible uh your competitor let's say um is he a man easily convinced or could did you believe that we could get him on side if we speak the right sort of valiant er, let's go hunting sort of words if you're looking to join the hunt he'll take you without a word hmm. getting on I was thinking side. more as a specific let's get rid of these people who have threatened your hometown sort of thing if you had asked me a few hours ago what his intentions and values were, I would have given you an answer, but it seems I would have been wrong. Interesting. And the hunt itself, what do you do with the creature when you have hunted it? Trophies? Food? Good question. They are the greatest gems the plane can produce. When something of this much energy forms in one place, a Zaradan forms around it. They are like knots in the weave. 
but of elemental. Mm. We absorb it for power. And we if create things from it, okay. but essentially, it's look. Many people search for the for the Zarda. Some go to worship it. Some to beg for boons of it. Some believe it is some divine entity. Many go to protect it from those that would hunt it. It draws much attention from many people for many reasons. We will not be alone on this. I fear if others encounter this mythical, it may be... Who knows? I don't. If they strike at the wrong moment and multiple parties encounter it at once, maybe it's a go. It may be overwhelmed. <clears throat> if you are as powerful as you say, and you go to bring him down and save the day. Or maybe it'll just yeah. be a giant clusterfuck. It, no, it will be a giant clusterfuck. I know something. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, um, I, don't, I have a few questions regarding this. Do you know? Um. So first of all, do you know half? You know, at least usually how far you find it. Is it like a like a journey away? Because you not you didn't you don't know where it is. I understand that, but it's not like close by. Usually, sometimes it's days, sometimes it's weeks. It could be hours. It appears almost at random. We think it's relatively okay. close. It's why the hunt was prepared so quickly. It's why these people are so ready right now. It's because it's. It only formed maybe a week or so ago, and our our diviners have uh, ascertained it is close. It moves. It moves through stone-like thing. Moves through a thing without a difficulty. Whatever that's like. Really. Like a fish swimming through water. I'm not sure what the fish is, but if it's like a creature it's... that lives in water. Okay, cool. That. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, I have, an, I have another question, because, um, so, is it always the same Zarotan that reformed itself, or is it, like, different entities? Yeah. Kind of both. He's the is same there a... one. Okay. There were... he, he said it was yeah. essentially a big ball of elemental energy in the weave. It could be anything. <clears throat> oh, see, it's because... If we kill Zaratan now, and we we take the heart, is there gonna be another Zaratan pop, popping off, like two weeks more, two weeks in? He well, it, it, form it, every it few seems that every yeah, few centuries rare. rare. Look, oh, all, yeah, all okay, we, cool, look yeah. as far as I can see, all that we okay. need to do, all that we need to do, if we carry on with this hunt, we stand, we stand more of a chance if we run into Iseko with the hunt. Than we do on our own. Oh yeah. If we go with them, all we need to do is sure. get is get to the heart and destroy it. It's true. And it seems like the fast the the thing that yep. moves fastest through the plane of elemental earth is going to be on that hunt. Do you? Yep. Do you all think? Because you said that the Zaratan is a purveyor of the most precious gems. Do you think it would have enough diamond? I imagine so. Maybe. The most rare of gems. I Diamond so. is rare and very valuable. I don't you, want to say it's... Did you seek? Um, yes, a lot of them. <laughs> you hunt the right prey. Turns. Okay, that's cool. That's that's two burns with one stone, guys. That's All pretty right. cool. Um, Emerald, we... um, if we help in the hunt, do you know if... Do you have like a like a specific use of the heart of the Zarutan, or can we, as we say, either take it or destroy it? Well, if you join the hunt, it will be claimed by Crucible. Shit. He will be with it as he wishes. The rest of the hunt will gain a measure of the spoils for sure, but it okay. will be to his discretion. If you want it for yourselves, then fuck it. Good luck. I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. so so the point is, yeah. No, it's okay. Carry on. Right, because so so the problem we have here is if we follow the hunt, we kind of participate with them, and therefore the 
the result and the treasure from it won't be ours, but at least divided among us. So we won't get be able to at least, you know, maybe we, we're not going to even have enough diamonds or we're not going to be able to touch the heart. But if we enter the hunt as like our own group, are they, if we kill the Zaratan, is there like a code or something that's, that states that no one can touch the bounty after no. we killed it? No, if you killed it, people Okay, cool, okay, through. yeah, so... Okay, alright. Bear in mind, Fuck. bear in mind that once we, once we have the diamonds, once, we, once we've done what we've done with this heart, I can get us out of here, like that. We don't need to be hanging around. So what do you propose? Right, so do we... Do we run alone as a as a lone party here in this hunt, or do we no, follow the, the, thing that, the bigger hunt? That is the thing that I'm thinking, right? I'm pretty sneaky, and I don't know this magical bag, right? If I put a thing in here, can it be found? It's not like a real place, right? It's if not I a didn't... bag. It goes. It's a it's a pocket. Not it's another it's another dimension, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so is the thing yeah. findable if I put it in there? I don't think so. Well, I mean, I mean, the heart is huge. The heart like is it. pretty big. It likes a boulder. Is it big? How big is a heart? I don't know. Really is, if you don't mind. The heart itself. I think it's a boulder size. Varies. Um, it depends. Huh? I've taken part in maybe three hunts. It was successful on one of them. Damn you! When uh, it was slain. The whole of the creature is riddled with ores and metals and all of this kind of knot of elemental strength. It cracks into pieces. People will spend weeks carting away chunks of stone embedded with gold and silver and everything else. The heart, the one we found, maybe the size of a large torso. Not, okay. Uh, mm. This is yours. You have just a newt. Mm. I kind of like hold the bag up near Newt. Could I squeeze mm -hmm. a newt also in this bag? Uh, no. Oh, no. I mean, I could mm. just try. It's like a duffel bag, right? The bag of holding we've got. More like a messenger bag. Oh, okay. I mean, do you want me to just like kind of try and? How long? How long does it take? To... No, 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 no. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's maybe. Newt, I don't believe not there's any idea. oxygen in there. It's a very poor idea. Okay, so yeah, we find, um, we find how long a way... does it take to cast uh, to uh, cast the spell uh, to change plane? I, I, in in my mind, if I think back, it in my would mind. take. I, I think it would take maybe around six seconds. What? what? Not very long. Okay, six, exactly. Okay, why not five wow. or seven? So, th theoretically speaking, we could follow the hunt and kind of just. Take it and just bam for away. If we right. grab, grabbed onto it super hard, maybe. I don't know how the spell works. Um, I have a question. No, Very but like, like you know, we just take it and it just, no. Maybe. Um, My concern is that the the Isiko guy, his threat was that if they go on the hunt, then he will destroy this entire town, and if we just take the heart then Isiko will still destroy this entire town. And I kind of like don't think that is going before. to be particularly convinced, though. No. It seems like Crucible is going to make on sure that, that no matter before. what we tell him. Well, that's fine. We just need to yeah, yeah. stop Isiko. Right? Yeah, exactly. Before. So whether or not we bamf, it doesn't change anything. We just need to make sure we kill Isiko. Yeah. And Yuchi, we're going to say something. Um. Well, for, first of all, I have a sneaking suspicion that we won't... We'll be bumping into Isiko. I'm not sure what, but... There's something there. That's called a reading the key. But the other important mm. thing... Uh, more so a question towards you, Emerald. How easy is it to steal this Jorn, would you say? Steal the Zorn? Well, if he's leaving in a few hours, you don't have long. And he's probably got it in his own home. So, he might have to kill Crucible. Or... What about that wait, wait. That man who wanted us to Guy. meet him in the, the glass drawer? That's right. He seemed to know something about the mount. The mount, that's right. That might be an option. To go and talk to him. Yeah. 
Um, Let's go talk I, to them. I feel like uh, I have a very cheeky DM question, uh, just very quickly. Um, so the the um, parameters of find the path uh, require you to be uh, it's required to be a, spe- a specific fixed location that you're familiar with on the same plane of existence. If I were to scry on the Zaratan and get a good enough approximation and memorization of the location, would I then be able to use Find the Path on that location? Nice. Mm-hmm. Damn. I think What's that, the definition of familiar? I think, I think that might, that might the, cut it. Okay. Yeah. I will. That's I will cool relay that score. to the to the team, but in in uh, in game terms. <laughs> you can also t- telepathy multiple right. people at once. So if you I want can to boost that to the team. Like yeah, that. I will. I will boost that to to the team. Mm. Okay. All right. Um. That's. Wow. That's that's like kind of. I like the fact that information is so easy to share now, but also. I'm sorry, Hi, I hello. Give... You can enter I... my mind. Okay. I'm sorry. I should give no, you money fine. before I it's do fine. that. I... But yes, if we cool. that still doesn't so, that still doesn't solve the fact of if if we find the Zaratan, we're likely going to find diamonds. That's two problems solved. However, yep. we current the, we have the second the third problem of Lord Iseko and whoever is out there, and the fourth problem of we have no way near to get there as fast as the others do. If we can steal this creature, that gives us a second upper hand as we're moving faster. Than Isiko, then, and we know where we're going. And everyone else. And ev- uh, we're faster yep. than. And we know where others. we're going. Most others, we know where we're going. We can find diamonds, and we can find the heart of the Zaratan. Now. Mushroom hemlock. The- I like your style. This is good. It seems like my brain has expanded since the mushrooms, um, but that's don't, don't, don't think that's. <laughs> there's a couple of ways that could have been taken. They really so, expand your mind, man. Yeah, but yes, <laughs> if we if we can find a way to get this this creature and get out as soon as we can, while we're there, I can scry on the creature and then find us the fastest route. But we need to do that quickly. I like that. Mm. Yep, I like that. We do. Um. Okay, let's go talk to the guy. I feel like it's a cool part. He seemed right. to know something about the mount. Mm-hmm. So if we go talk to him... Uh, <clears throat> Run quick. Um, em- Emerald, um, I have a question. Do you have any ways of contacting us through your like through magic or anything else if we need to? No. <laughs> All right. the um, just in case he's sick of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, my, my, that was a question because... That was a question because, um, in case Iseko would just go straight to the town and we didn't see him on the path, we would at least know if he hit. Okay, I don't cool. Think Iseko would. Well, I think you go no, straight to no, the Zaratan. No, 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 no. I agree. Iseko Kill these guys. Yeah, 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 no, so time. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, hang on before cool. we go. Um, thank you, thank you Emerald. Um, I don't pretend to know anything about the politics of this place, but um. I hope things work out, and if we can help, you've helped us, uh, let us know. Maybe a little? If you uh, happen to cross Crucible's path, and he did happen to die a gruesome death, not saying I'd hate it. It's an unpleasant place. That's fair. The politics of this place can be harsh and hurtful. And for what it's worth, are you wading into this? I wish you well on your hunt. If it saves people at this well, time. Well, to be fair, if- I can, I can promise you, Thank you, Emerald, that if Crucible decides to get in the way of me and those diamonds, he will have to kill me to my final death before I allow him to get there. And also she's just going to walk out the room the at that possible. point. She's done with this man. Like, <laughs> Let's go. Thank you again, and apologies cool. for She's the cool. uh, rudeness earlier. Tensions were running high. Thank you very much. He kind yeah. of gives like a slight Bye. and closes the door with the air of a man who normally doesn't have to close I like the style of your house. Um, <laughs> and like, as, as Marigold Very is fancy. leaving, 
you can hear her like muttering to herself like i don't care if he's centuries old he fucking respects a 20 year old human more than he does a 300 year old gnome <laughs> <Cunt. 30. laughs> oh! yeah he is i like i like angry marigold to be fair i'm uh, marigold i like your style you you don't mince word Look, quick, I know we, I just quick. kissed a little bit of ass there, oh, saying I'm sorry, sorry and shit, but... i all nice people. <laughs> look, look, guys, we can, we can talk about... so much, please don't hate me. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about this all we like, we can... We can talk about this all we like, but look, the faster we get this done, the faster we can leave, and the faster we can wash our hands of the politics of this place. We find this man, we find out what oh, yeah, we can no, about the mount, a... we take the mount, we scry, we find paths, we go. Alrighty. I, yeah, Easy. I was expecting us to be walking and speaking at the same time. Let's go, let's go. You discuss this brief plan as you're walking, you head down a few flights of these stairs around the place. It is, from the busyness of, it, of your entrance to this place, of it being this kind of bustling crowd of excited people about the festivities of this hunt, it has gone quiet with the air of preparation. An air of excitement, but muted. It is that moment of like packing up before a holiday of like, I'm sure I've forgotten something, but I'm excited. You can see people moving around, carrying things, and you find your way very easy to the glass jaw. This large open archway leads into an open tavern, and it is full of people drinking and chatting excitedly. Oh. Ooh. Behind um, the bar. I just have a question. Um, as we're walking, uh, I don't know how likely this will be, and this is me being very cheeky, um, but if people are as we're walking if people are talking about the zaratan mm -hmm. i want to try and get as much information about this creature in my head as i physically can like okay. if they mention like oh uh, my, my father saw one and it was this big and like anything at all that i can get in my head i'm just i'm opening my ears and just make a perception check i will do that uh, are you doing this in, in the tavern uh, as we're walking, as we're in the tavern, like okay. I'm listening to as many conversations as I can physically understand. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this will kind of shut you out from doing a whole lot else uh, and engaging that's with fine. all that's going on. Being like tuned into like listening to 16 conversations at once is a lot, but go ahead and make a perception check. That's fine. Uh big money, no whammies. Right, we got this. That's a 28. Oof! Fuck yes. All right. <laughs> You, as you all get settled into the tavern and you come in, you, the first thing that grabs your attention is behind the bar is a kind of, is a large ogre behind the bar. Large tusks kind of poking up from his upper lip, from, from his bottom lip, skin like sagging concrete, speckled in like different kind of rocks and pebbles that seem to be like drifting and floating across the surface. You see a large kind of tattooed, like almost like a brand across his large, open, hairy chest, which is almost like cut like a gem, kind of ge geometry. Standing behind the bar as you all filter through, you can hear excited conversations. And Helmuck, as you begin to kind of, you follow along the group, but keep like listening and like, mm -hmm. hyper aware to all these things, you hear lots of talk of the Zaratan. Uh, in terms of specifics about its appearance, mm -hmm. You hear people talking about things like, oh, mate, your your blade isn't going to penetrate its hide. It's got, like, it carries a mountain on its back. There's no way. Uh, you get lots of, like, exaggerated hide pairing up people who have been on the hunt. So, like, no, you weren't on that hunt. So, I was, I was. It was this long. Apparently, it was, like, 70 feet long. Mm -hmm. um, and, and another person we hear says, like, oh, it's like, no, it's, like, 50 foot, but it's really wide. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of like, oh yeah, it's going to be like excited to talk, talk about this. This you get, you essentially gather that across these different conversations, it is a massive creature mm -hmm. that moves like a small hill inside. Okay, it is solid of like stone or interwoven with precious ores and gems mm -hmm. and metals, and it dumbly wanders through the plane of earth. Mm -hmm. existing. It consumes gems which become part of its body, it consumes ores which become part of the network of steel and gold that decorate its shell. Um, it's essentially very big, very dumb. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, is there- oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, Andrew, as a quick 
a question for yes. aesthetics wise. Is it kind of like a Zora Magdaros from Monster Hunter? Is you don't hear any talk of like you don't hear any vibe. talk of like lava, um, <clears throat> okay. or, or, or volcanic stuff okay. around um, it. One um, final question, and again, I'm very, I'm very understanding if this is not true. This, this massive, important beast. There wouldn't happen to be like any tapestries of it around anywhere. So, I think a legendary painting or a two. Legend, just a painting. <laughs> Someone spray painted, spray painted it on the side of a building. A you know what? Yeah, okay. I think on, on like one of the walls of the of this tavern, you can see like a this set with emeralds within it. You can see a, a depiction of the Tao that you were just nice. Um, okay, the massive mall in hand, conquering a very kind of small version of what looks essentially to your eyes as a very big fuck off turtle. Yeah. Okay, so I have a big I've, fuck off shell yeah. creature. I've heard of the target, and I have a likeness or picture. Okay, good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Now to just you, get a as... scrap of hair. <laughs> <laughs> as as Hemlock kind of goes into this kind of quiet listening zone, you all enter this space. It is bustling, and this ogre kind of turns towards you all. You want drink? Uh, and Marcus, your eyes are immediately drawn to a shadowy figure with a hood pulled over um, that seems to have the same kind of cracked, dark skin of, of the Ganassi that you bumped into earlier. Shadowy figure? In a mm -hmm. bar? Yeah. <laughs> Not important. I'm going to talk to the ogre. Absolutely. The goblin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I will respond in pup giant. Uh, yes, I would love a drink. Thank you. What you pay with? Gold? Silver? Depends he, like, how good the drink is. He like nods. He puts up on the on the counter itself, on the bar, a very robust set of scales. And he pulls out like a, a few weights and then he sets them on one side and goes. How many drinks? Marigold, note. I'll take one. Do we should have hemlock. Marigold, well, you probably well, yeah, need one. That sure, guy was an asshole no. to you. And... I promise you, I do not need one. Oh, we do have a hydrate. Hemlock hey. just sort of waves a hand like no, but is still listening. Hydrate. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take one. Okay, hydrate. Too. Like a quick one. Just the, yeah, sure. One for me and the drow. Thank you. He puts two, two little yeah. like, slabs on one of the scales and put it out of balance. Gold in. Level. You keep putting gold coins on, and you realize for like. This is, this is fucking expensive. This is like five, ten, and at about fifteen gold, it levels out. Fucking hell! The ogre takes this whole scale. Put bronze. It's more damn. He places down. I guess most pot. people here pay in like gold chunks. <laughs> Coins gems, or gems. gems. Which just don't pay with gold. Yeah. Maybe they pay with like gold yeah. Weight. Whatever it is, how valuable it is, swollen well weight. Shiny rocks. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Can, could, could we have put, like, <laughs> copper? We could have put copper, right? Wait if a minute, I can like... pay for this! Oh, no, we can, we can try and screw it and put <laughs> copper on there instead if you want. Well, I think he'd use different weights for copper, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's what I thought, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more weight, yeah, exactly. Petran, oof, you're buying the next round, Ashura. <laughs> anyway, I think our friends are all right. Um, yeah. Solid stone tankards, very thin wool, like very finely crafted. So they're not very heavy, but they're kind of like a hard, hard, it's like slightly rough exterior. Uh, and it's full of a. It's a very nice beer. Very well. It is deep, rich oh. in flavor. And you can see there is like, uh, like gold flakes kind of floating in it. Um, but like. It's Goldschlager. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> this is becoming, I don't know or like beer, but. If you like beer, this is great. Oh well, no, gold, gold <laughs> like yeah. um, okay. that vodka like, with like, gold foil in it. it oh, right. I've had that, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It is it's nice. It's not delicious because it's of the gold. It has, uh, it has no, it's not mineral, delicious because of the gold. It kind of it's has just... a mineral taste. It's, no, but it's, this, this is just more expensive it's because it's of the gold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alright, okay. <laughs> uh, he pushes it across, across um, the, the bar. Well, uh, to the first drink uh, in this plane of existence, Marcus. Nice Welcome. Thank you, friend. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here with you, buddy. 
uh, shall we? The go stone go? tank it kind of adds mineral taste. Yeah, it's weird. Kind of. That's a very better. rich and okay, earthy really flavor. Have... Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, good one. Yeah, very earthy. Anyway, should we go? We see actually the don't really have a lot of time. Yeah, let's, yeah let's... we should. Yep. <laughs> Alright, you yep. you very easily find the, the shadowy figure in the bar. Who like he, you you get there and you actually see that he seems it, it's a booth uh seat, like a like a booth table with two sides. He's got he's got his feet up on the table. Um he's got a, several drinks kind of like at his like on the table, most of them empty. Um it looks like he's very, very comfortable. Um and you for a second, the, the, you're all very, very perceptive. You, you notice this booth, while he's all like in shadow and with his hood up, this booth faces directly to the bar. It is very, very visible. It's one of like it's one of the first booths that you see. And there's a there's a conflict there of the mysterious dark aesthetic, but the positioning to make sure he's very visible. You um, rolled a one on its stealth check. So, yeah, um, or he's, he's dumb. He sees you all coming, and he kind of... You came. He pulls his hood back. I'll apologize now if I've got any kind yeah. of... sour countenance. I'm not in the best of moods today. If you've got coin, I might be able to help. Take a seat. Me neither, darling. Well, then we'll get on like a house on fire. Take a seat. I feel like setting a house on pressure. fire. The house is here catch fire? They're made of stone. Yes, I Mango, yes. The same house Use that power. Use that emotions. Okay, I like the metaphor, but let's... I, I feel like we've, we don't get lost in it. Um, so, um, you wanted to talk to us regarding... Well, first off, hi, welcome to the Glass Jaw. Yes, that... My name's Glower. <sighs> Sorry, this is not even much more of a performance. Um, is it what story? Hold on, no, one second. And he kind of like takes a deep drink and like swills it in his mouth for a second, kind of like limbers himself up slightly. He's like, <sighs> one second. <sighs> Hi there, nice to meet you. You're clearly new in town. Name's Glower. Look, maybe if you've got some coin, you look pretty fresh for uh, this place. Lucky for you, I'm a guy. Perhaps we can uh, make some kind of arrangement and find yourselves at home in the plane of Earth now. Yeah, that was that was. Don't worry, don't worry. That was like six out of ten. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was kind of that. Yeah, yeah, no worry. Marigold is gonna um, slam five gold on the bar, and she'll be like, "What do you know? I don't have time for this." Well, what do you want to know? You know something about the mount that is used for the hunt? You looked awfully <clears throat> disturbed when it was mentioned. I think it's a sore spot. Why? You, like, go up to the five goal. Back at you. Takes it. That mount is my partner. Oh! I'm a guide. Yeah, we're not here and to judge. Traveling. Okay. Traveling around this place, do you ever get? Do people ever tell you that you come off kind of? Never mind. <laughs> the fastest way of getting around here is doing the whole sure pushing Earth out of the way of your, you know, travel and just blast down through. And there is nothing quite as talented as my Kigo. Mm -hmm. Kigo's a Zorn. She's a gem hunter, <clears throat> earth bending little creature, you might say. Um, so, essentially, I would. Guide you around the place, and oh, we just got a raid. We got a raid. Hey, we're gonna raid. Hey, welcome Simba. to the glass. D and Doodle. Bitch. Okay. okay. Welcome to the glass. D and Doodle. D and Doodle. Wow. D and Doodle. I like the name. The... the name is cute. Welcome to the glass jaw. It's a tavern in the elemental plane of Earth. What crazy? Oh no! There's an apostle of Orcus. It's Lady Kaisa. <laughs> <gasps> There's a spy. Oh god! There's a spy! <laughs> Which green is it? Whose name is Lady Kaiser? No, there's the an apostle of Orcus. No. Ah. It's... Welcome. They're trying to get Thematic. Ah. <laughs> Hell yeah. No. Thematic, for sure. So. His name's Glower. Uh, you mentioned that you're looking to go after the Zaratan. 
I would be on the hunt, but my partner's been kidnapped by that asshole Crucible. And he's gonna give it away as a gift, and now he's taken her as his own. That's essentially the situation. So he, he just kidnapped it. He didn't buy it, her from you? Or... <sighs> Laws here think... are taken very seriously, and they are set in stone. Which, as you can see, doesn't count for much. Stone seems to fucking wibbly wobbly every other day. So, yeah, I came back into town with a fresh bounty, and he was like, you know what? The tax for this is going to be your mount. And it was say yes, or get mashed into the stone by his big fuck off hammer. So. Well, that's yeah. significantly ah. shitty, and choice, I am huh? pissed, so I'm more than happy to go and fight Crucible and get her back for you. Yeah. Well, that would be a very good start. We don't need to fight him. Amicable arrangement. I think we do. Well, we don't need to fight him right what's now. What's uh, um, guy like? Uh, medical... Um, an ass. Later, later. Picture a back. snake, but then the snake is an yeah. asshole. Right. And then the snake like is a... an abusive asshole. Like a turd python. <laughs> like a turd, an abusive turd python. Mm, okay. Is essentially what we're dealing with. I'm just, I'm kind of picturing a worm. Very like nice a worm. Now, look, I'll say this quietly so the upper establishment don't hear. Dow are assholes. All of them. Ah, uh, yes. No, Crucible we, is yeah, that. Yeah, we figured. Oh, hey, then yeah. he's a manipulative douchebag on top. So, hey, sorry to hop in again, but we got another right. raid. Fighting another demons. raid? Hey, oh my god! Okay. Oh, all right. We're discussing Damn. how a douchebag out there. How about yeah. Dow are douchebags? Um, we all hate Dow douchebags. Right, Dow douchebags. Glower, Glower. Glower, Glower. How do you say your name? Um, tell me, so that mount, um, do you know where we could find it? If we take you with us, which we we, we, we would love to, because this place is weird and you, the rock moves and, and stuff, so yeah, um, would love to have you with us. Um, the mount, do you know where it's stored here? It's I'll staying. Crucible's... Oh. Ah, yes. Yeah, Marigold, we're gonna fuck him up. <laughs> if you're confident, Good. you can go... We're definitely gonna the, fuck him up. I guess the mid-coup chieftain of the place. I'm pretty confident. I know you're flashing I mean, your dragon scales, but... Uh... Glower, um... A Dowd was debating kidnapping me and selling me for slavery earlier. I showed him my magic and he decided he didn't want to try that, so... That was just one of us. Yeah, I've got a good feeling about this. Dragon scales and showing off and things like that. And fuck it, if we can put Crucible in this place, I think most people would be in Which is six game. feet under. Oof. Well, you've got Spunk and yeah, I like maybe that. not kill him. I feel like... Well, no, I love I love that energy from her, but usually it's from me. And and she told me, she taught me how to it. kind of... Yeah, 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 no, no, I, I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, I just she taught me not to be too uh, forward and not just kill people. So, uh, Marigold, sure remember what you told me, and maybe sure even kill, it, kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to know what this druidic tattoo says on my head? Is it? Well, last time I saw a tattoo, I, you know, tell me. Yep. This little inscription in druidic says, "Mighty Guardian." This person, this crucible, sounds like he is doing nothing but yes. harm to this community. That is something I do not stand okay. for. And considering I'm already angry, I am more than willing yeah. to go into this man's home, slay him where he stands, and get this nice man back his friend. Okay. Uh, so that I can go and get those diamonds I'm all and bring my I'm... fucking wife back all from right. the dead. Fair it's enough. Let's just go and kill there, the dude. I'm I don't the energy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love her when she's like that. I hope she right. stays a bit. Usually, because like that, it can help, you know, we can just do chaotic shit. Let's do it. I lo yeah. It's fine. Let's I'll go. get my anger out and it'll be, I'll be back to making good berries tomorrow morning. Um, oh, oh, no. When are you ready to go? Can't keep a level. Man. I mean, now, if you want to. They're leaving in a few hours, so. Well, then, shall we? And you're just going to stand up. I was beckoning other people. Okay, uh, can you point us to. Yeah. You come can you point us to. Um... Me. Yeah. Hemlock I mean, is still fully distracted, kind of on the table, just stare, just staring at this picture yep. and like slightly mouthing to herself with like loads of different conversations going on. Nice. 
Yeah, I like that it would just would just taking you by the shoulders be like, yeah, yeah, no, she's with us, don't worry. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Well, oh, all right. I can see it. Didn't think my day was going like right. this. Just point it to me. We're overthrowing the government. Let's go. That's not like... the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, That's usually what we do. Oh. <laughs> you know, he seems to have like coiling tattoos across his like his form. He like, like rolls his sleeves up. He's got tattoos in primordial. Uh, Marigold, yes. Sorry, I've forgotten. What race is this man? Uh, he is a Ganassi. Uh, ah, he seems yes. okay. like he in, in, in proportions. That's right. Um, but he is an Earth Ganassi. Um, he, he's, he's wearing quite baggy clothing. He's got kind of it's it, 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 it almost like the like the cotton shirt and jeans kind of vibe, um, with a, a, a cloak across the back. Uh, no armor or weapons or anything. Uh, Marcos. So Glower, was it? Uh, Marcos, hey. nice to meet you. Um, and you. You were saying that this Crucible guy, he's sort of like a dictator, right? He rules by might and just oh, likes to take what he wants. He's kind of both. He takes what he wants, he likes being strong, but he's also a lying, conniving asshole. So it's... Yeah, he's evil, right? Oh, they're all fucking evil. Great. Fuck it, I'm evil That's all I needed to know. I'm pushing for your goals at everyone's other... like, at the cost of anything else. But, uh... No, just Mary. making sure that taking him down a few pegs is the right thing to do, morally speaking, and it seems like oh, it is, so let's well, go. Let me assure you, if your morals are in question, defeating this monstrous foe is going to do nothing but clear your conscience. So, let's go. He, he stands up and begins to lead you out of the tavern. It's not a long walk. Yep. It's not <clears> a long <throat> walk. Um, you go up and down a few more little <laughs> staircases and things. Oh, back to the town view of Stoog. <gasps> Ooh. Um, ah, uh, that you are returned once more to that energy of preparation, people carrying supplies, and you can hear the grinding of weapons in several places echoing out. You can see sparks from a grind wheel several stories above, raining down in the midst of this cavern. You progress to one of the higher sections, a little further back than Emerald's home, and you see it almost kind of a secondary crack in the rock enters a small alleyway almost. But this alleyway is, like, paved. It is not just a carved stone floor, it is actually paved in large stones of, like, dark, kind of mottled granite. The kind of lines between are filled in with silver. And you find another one of these large doors, one of the fancy doors in the town. It seems like the station of who, who lives in somewhere is judged by the door. Um, and this guy has, like, solid dark iron. Uh, it, it seems rusted in places, but intentionally. You can see where like the red is almost mottled in kind of symmetrical pattern uh, across it. Um, and you can see in Primordial across the top, Crucible's house. Um, it's a wide, going to be 10 feet or so across. Um, so kind of gets a, a, not nervous, but kind of like holds up a little bit nearer the entrance. It's like... Um, no. The quieter and quicker we can do this, the less likely he is to roll in with friends. Uh, Kegel can push through rock, but it has to be natural rock. This stuff, and like he taps like the marble paved floor, uh, this stuff won't do. Nothing's going to be pushing through this stuff. It's been worked and is artificial and stuff. Um, but uh, if we can get Kegel out of the house, down the street to where the natural rock starts again, then we're gone. And we can get, I mean, if there's nothing else you guys want to do. Leaving is probably a good idea because he'll, people will find him and be like, "Oh no, someone killed Crucible." People will be like, "Wow, that's probably a relief." The Dow will be like, "Fuck, mm. let's mm. go get those bastards." So let's make that as hard as possible. Can we do it quick? We do it quiet. Um, sorry, I'm back. Uh, now we're uh, out of the conversations. Um, I really... Oh, hydrate. Um. Hmm. Um, Marigold, um, I have it prepared if you don't. How about, how do you feel about maybe I can, uh, okay, this is going to sound insensitive and I know I'm very sorry. How would you feel about me briefly turning your partner into something else just so we can get, get her out without people understanding that it, seeing that it's her? I mean, if we could just tell her what's going on, I'm sure that would be We could do, yeah, we could, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. She's, look, she's not the brightest, uh, bulb in the bunch, but she's not, uh, Fix, you, know. you know, I've got OSP can do her. Yeah, we um, can we can get in and get out. <clears throat> we can maybe uh turn her into a mouse or something, and then we, we get we get out. Um, no one 
For your for your reference, I don't turn Good. polymorph prepared. Okay, I think I, I do. Yes, so that should be okay. We get in, we get out. If we fight, we fight. I hate this man. This 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 man seems awful. They are um, all awful. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so, loving this. Harness this anger. Yeah. Imagine, if you, imagine if you lived here and this was your life every day. Now yeah. channel that into the force behind the punch, and let's go. And you have, you can mm-hmm. see like he's getting nervous now. Like he feels emboldened, and he feels he seems to have some faith in your abilities. Um, yeah. With, with your convincing dragon scales showings and the fact that your dealings with the rest, um, he is not someone that would go toe to toe with a Dao. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And you can sense he is a little bit yeah. nervous. Uh, we are. But you guys are still Don't worry. Back there and ready. It's cool. Fucking ballsy. Okay. You guys okay. Should we yeah. just. Should I... Knocking um, on the door? Oh, we don't want to announce ourselves. Hello, Mr. Crucible. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Excuse me, we're here to kill you. <laughs> okay. okay, maybe Ma- not. Maybe not. Ma- Marco, do, it... do you still is have any. Open? Do you have any more uh, ability for for stealth stealth to uh, or shall I shall I do I, us? I do I can. Um, you, may, you probably wait, wait, know my. Anything. Let's just try the door. Well, it depends how we want to approach this. Do we want to go in the front door? Do we want to go out on the side? Do we want to like sneak in, get the creature, get out? What are we doing? Because I can I cast, like we I, can, I, I have gem. the ability to make us stealthy again. It's just um, if we're fighting Isiko later today, I don't Apple. necessarily want to use all my spells. I can, I can go. I can do if we, if we continue if we decide to go stealthy. Hmm. You're standing outside this door. Are they the same kind of like very head? Yeah, are, they, are the the doors very heavy, like um, in uh, Emerald's uh, house? They look yeah, big chunky metal doors. Yeah. Cool. Can I try, like, gently just to try to see if they're locked? You push down slightly on a handle? There's a handle. Push down slightly on the handle, and you hear a... ...of the actual mechanism of the door unlocking, and there is the very faintest of... ...as the door seems to give way. Okay. Alright, let's go. Stealthy and... is I look at the group and I'm just like... Uh, yeah, yeah, for it. Do you want to cast it or shall, or do you, do you want to cast it or no. shall I cast it, Marcos? Your spells are probably more valuable than mine, I'll cast it. Okay. Alrighty. Are you all entering? Yes. Yeah! Okay. In which case, you all Flower, please. squeeze Hide through yourself. the doorway. And as you step within, you see a continuation of this, kind of this style of like panelled marble flooring. In the walls either side of you, you see kind of stone-carved reliefs of mighty, noble-looking Dao figures. You see ahead, the room splits to one side into an open room where a large stone table and chairs lay. To your left, you can see where the corridor splits, one into a corridor into a further off room, one into a room that's closer by, and you can see moving in the from your point of view in this corridor one of these large Dao figures, not one you recognize, but moving in a room off to this side. This music is so... Hmm. It's very jovial. Royal coupling. It's so jovial. It yeah, very jovial. it's very jovial. You, you can see it's at the like far back. stealthily marching into this house. <laughs> we use the music to cover the sound of our footsteps. <laughs> you can also see at the far end of the room, opposite the table. Mm. And these, like all these walls are like, decorated by like standing gems or just chunks of like gold ore twisted into like an artistic shape um you can see opposite the table on the other side kind of built into the wall fine like gold and brass and steel cages you can see like almost like straw like kind of canvas matting laid out on the floor and you can see there are some figures kind of in those cages um humanoid uh yeah uh, yeah. Uh, you make, a, make a real quick perception check for me. Uh, 25. 25. You can see there are there, there are two within your line of sight right this instant. Um, aside from the Dao in the room to the side of you, which you are at this point kind of frozen 
that you can see one of them, and if he turns around, he might see you, but this one is not currently facing your direction. And as you focus your gaze towards those cages, you can see one human in proportion figure, definitely a Ganassi. You can see their skin is like a deep, kind of reddy brown, like thick clay uh, that seems to kind of like build up to almost like a flaring out uh, of, of where the hair would be. You can see one of those kind of short, round, very hairy creatures that you saw with the entourage earlier on, a Corred. Um, yeah. And I think now, as you guys stand perched within the doorway of this Dao's home, of Crucible's home, witnessing the slaves finding this Zorn and noticing that there are Dao inside close by. I think now is where we'll end our episode. On time! Insanity! <clears throat> I know. So, wow. I need, I need, 11.29. Is for you guys to hold on to this anger at these goddamn assholes oh. and be ready to come back next Thursday to slice the ever-living shit out of some prick elemental douchebags. Can we do that? Oh, oh you, you, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I want Megan to keep that. Oh, yeah. I am perpetually ready to punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're ready to kill some assholes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, dope. If you I guys feel like I'm home... always ready to kill some assholes, but I want Megan to keep that. Hell yeah. Yeah. And if you guys at home want to join I us along, make sure if you are brand new from one of these That's wonderful That's my secret. I'm always <laughs> angry. <laughs> so, if you have joined us from uh, being here before, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us on our little story as we venture through the Earth plane of Earth to save lost loved ones and save the day of evil Lich Queen's plots. Uh, and if you are brand new to us from one of these wonderful raids, thank you for coming, thank you for raiding, thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed this and want to see the, un uh, the, the untempered rage of these very righteous people uh, <laughs> against these very not righteous now, uh, be sure to follow and uh, so, follow me on Twitter and stuff. That's what keep up with us. We have a wonderful Discord full of wonderful, beautiful nerds. So if you want to be part of our little community, that's what we're here for. So thank you so much for coming, Meg. Do you have any final closing bits? I do. We Did have it? loads of guest spots happening this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> so obviously, as usual on Sunday, we are going to be continuing with the Cyberpunk Red campaign. Um, that is Sunday at 5 p.m. GMT. So yeah, uh, yeah. come back here and join us for that. Uh, not all of us, some of us, uh, and and other people that we like. <laughs> um, yep. And then on Monday we will be running a uh, one shot uh, on Mini Arc Monday. We're not 100% sure what that's going to be yet, but we're going to figure it out. It's going to be cute. Um, yeah, so you'll see some of us there. We'll have a guest or something. It'll be cool, as always. Um, and then guest spots are as follows. Tomorrow evening, our lovely Prudence um, is over on Kilted Cajun's channel playing a Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Um, and that starts mm. at 7 p.m. GMT. So uh, go and check that out tomorrow. Um, on Tuesday, next week um it is the rogue trader campaign uh that pro is also in <laughs> uh on witch and craft um so that's another like cyberpunk -y space adventure thingy um which is uh 9 p.m gmt uh and then on wednesday also on witch and craft uh andrew and rowan are in a ravnica mm. campaign uh, which also starts at 9pm GMT. It's getting very dramatic. Uh, they're Damn. going to slash are at a concert. Um, and yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be lit, if you will. Um, I think that's about it for guest spots and stuff. For may I, the may I mention week. one thing? One very brief thing. Uh, uh, it is not, not a guest spot, but related to Witch and Craft Games, and some of you might know I also appear over there, I work oh, for them. Yeah. Uh, their game, uh, 12 Inner Demons, uh, has come out on drive through yes. uh, So the, oh, PDF wow. of, wow. the, the PDF of 12 Inner Demons is finally out. It has been so, it's taken so much effort and it's been such a long time. And I can say this unbiasedly because I didn't work on it. It's a great game, <laughs> you should go buy it. Um, but yes, go to I think I believe there is a link on on their Twitter, which is at Witch N Craft. 
uh, go there. It is a wonderful game. Please consider buying it either as a PDF or ordering a hard copy. Whatever. It's it's a good game and buy it. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Do it. Uh, Got another raid from Sword and Quill. Oh, oh, oh welcome. Just, Sword and Quill. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we're just doing our shout outs as we're wrapping up, yeah. but we will uh, hopefully be doing a raid to somewhere else. I was Sticky just suggestions in, in, in the chat. chat. Uh, a place to do a little raid. Thank you for oh. the wonderful raid. Thank you for coming. If you 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 missed out on us venturing forth into the unknown of Earth, discovering a town, and realizing just how much of a douchebag uh, that Dow can be, um, if you do want to catch up on that, the vod this will be here on Twitch, and the YouTube's go up later on in the week about Wednesday time. So if you do want to catch up, yeah. welcome. Uh, and yeah, check that stuff out. Uh, aside from that, last minute little shout outs. One to our, our friends of the show. Uh, just want to throw some love at the Cold Game Merchant who make wonderful leather and vegan leather. Dice trays, dice bags, dice cups, uh, lock gear and stuff. Go check them out at cognitivemerchant.co.uk. They make lovely stuff and they're lovely and you should go give them a support. The ambient wind in the background throughout this episode was provided by Sword Coast Soundscapes. They offer free licensing for all of their wonderful ambient sounds and soundscapes for different environments for table tabletop RPGs and streams and things. They create make some really, really cool stuff. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. The art used across this stream to both have the that cave planks and the town uh, and the tavern. Uh, the cave planks are, were wonderfully created by Guobo Peng on Art Station. Uh, Stug itself, the outside of the town, is by Gabrielle Yenganyan, uh, also on Art Station. And the tavern is by Tyler uh, T Tile Red Line Art at Deviant Art, um, which should be. Uh, in the credits, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. So thanks to everyone that does help provide stuff that makes this show what it is. Uh, thanks for coming and watching. And I hope that we will see you guys next time for, for other wonderful creations here at Chasing Tales and here for more D&D next Thursday. Oh, that's, it for me. that's it for me. And the raid uh, is getting started. Thank you. Ooh. Raid, we are raiding. Chaotic Lawful Incorporated. Chaotic Incorporated. Go say hi, give them some love! Get ready, go give them some love. We love Larai! Larai is amazing. Screw you, Orcus! The apostles are probably fine. Orcus himself, not a big fan. I love the apostle. He's right. Love the. Love the. We are right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody! Bye! Bye! Bye!